I've won tracking three times at the world. I don't know how many times the nationals I've won tracking. Because when I, I won't tonight, but tomorrow I'm going to track my dog three times. Okay? You got to work. You got to work. Anything that in life is great is hard work. If it's not hard work, it's not great. It's not great. It's not great. The success is not you. The success is that dog, the trust he has in you, okay? The relationship you have, the faith. You know, I, I'm not a I'm not a parent. I don't have a kid, you know. But it must be an amazing feeling when that child looks at you and trusts you and, and has faith in you and knows that their parents could never do no harm and their parents are always going to trust them. And it must be even on a bigger level with a dog, even a bigger level. At the end of the day, you go back home and there is your dog hanging out with you. Yeah. And that's yeah. what it's about. Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to Training Without Conflict podcast. I have today as my guest, Dean Calderon. Me and Dean are going many years back, <laughs> like many years back. And as always, I will, I will let Dean introduce himself for those of you that are too young and don't know uh, um, that you should. But Dean, thank you for, for joining me and, and I, I'm looking forward to this conversation so much. Oh, great, Ivan. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, uh, I mean, introduce myself, Jesus Christ. It's just like, I don't want to blow smoke up my own ass. So I've just had a real good time in dog sport. That's all. And I've had some bunch of real good dogs and I've had a bunch of really good help. That's the important thing, you know, and, uh, um, uh, instead of blowing smoke up my ass, I'll say something. Uh, our sport is the best sport. Our sport demonstrates performance obedience. Without our sport, there's no good dogs. I want everybody to. I'm sorry, I'm raving, but you know, I've been no, no, about this is this very shit. good. And I've been thinking about this shit. I want everybody to have as much fun as I've had in dog sport. I've had so many great experiences, man. You know, and that's just glory days and that shit. But and when Dean is talking about our sport, it's IGP. IGP. IGP or old as we used to know it. I don't really, I don't really have any interest in any other sport. Okay, I really don't. I have, I, I want everybody to have as much fun as you can with your dog. Okay, but there is an aspect of what I've done in my life that's helped a little bit of the future maybe okay and also to i mean there's a lot of thoughts i have about this and my mind is jumbled from being an old hippie but um, um i've contributed a little bit to a future okay for sure and if you and if you want to stay and i always i've told this to people you know back in the old days ivan People fought us about going to the world championship. Should USA have any kind of funding for the team? And I'm like, dude, you want to stay isolated on this continent? That's what you want to do? That is your glory, Topeka, Kansas? Give me a break. Come on. Don't you have any goals? Don't you have any aspirations? I mean, come on. And, and this is what IGP will bring you, okay? First of all, there's a world of great trainers out there. And by, and by having that goal of trying to strive to a world championship, you meet people, you meet great trainers, you meet good things in your life. Don't stay isolated upon this continent, okay? And plus, our sport encompasses three things, not just one, not just with this. And there's so much more than meets the eye in our sport, too. People really need to understand the why fours about our sport. And more than that, more than that. 40 years from now, good dogs ain't going to come from whatever initials you want to put on back of that dog's name. Good dogs will come from IGP dogs of today. That's where they'll come from. I'm sorry. Ask yeah. me something else. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is... Man, people really, people, you know, they really, again, I want you to have fun with our, and our sport is hard. It's, it's, a, it's a hard sport. It's you fucking gotta, the hardest 
sport you know, ever. You, like, go, you got to you take it on the chin. <clears throat> I, you know, I go out there and I see the new handlers, and bless these guys' heart. They just you just get take it on the chin. You know, it's a tough sport. But you ask me something, I'll shut up. No, no, it's, you, you are the one that needs to talk, but it's definitely the hardest sport. Like yes, I, it is. I, I cannot. Like That's another beautiful thing about our sport. Maybe the most beautiful thing is our sport is competitive. And anything in human nature you're competitive at, you get better at. World records are broken every day. Okay, right. I've been training dogs. I'm an old man forever. Dog training has gotten so much better. The dogs have gotten so much better, okay? And really, our sport, because of the multi-aspects, it's three things. It's really the cutting edge of all of this. It's all of this, you know? It's, it's um, you know, I don't watch like I used to. I don't, I don't watch like I used to. But it's really important that the judges, you know, the judges set the standard of, of what you, what, is to be done on the field, okay? And they must maintain this idea of the performance obedience. The obedience must be exact, but the dog must be happy. He must be in drive, okay? He must be, okay? And uh, and uh, with that, we're always going to have a good path, you know, always. But anyway, I'm just, go ahead. So... I, I know we, I mean, we have to go over a lot of things, but well, for for the people, because I have an audience that kind of, I, I mean, I started the podcast fairly soon and I have an audience that uh, is from all different areas of, of dog mm-hmm. training, you know? Super. So Super. we go, we go, you and I go very far back. Well, like, you wanted me to tell some old stories. You want me to tell you the story oh, that the time the dog bit me in the dick? Fuck, we, <laughs> that was a we, classic one. Uh, <laughs> Ivan first comes to California, okay, and he wants to train his dog, okay. So he has a Malamar. Like in those days, nobody had a Malamar, you know. And I had and I had worked, you know, I had seen him. I'd worked with him a little bit. Anyway, so the dog came around the blind and bit me in the leg or something, okay. So then there was a trial in Fresno, yeah, in Fresno, yeah, yeah in Fresno, yeah. okay. So we go down there, you know, and people had never seen like a Mal- really no one had a Malamar, you know. So the dog's running the blinds, and he's running the blinds. I'm talking to the people and said, you got to be careful about these malamas when they come around, they'll bite you in the leg. And sure enough, a little dog came down and nailed me right in the crotch. That was a good one. But anyway. That was an amazing story. And, and this was, man, this was me kind of fucking up because, you know, I came, I, I came from Belgium and I did some Belgian rings. So it was, I was still transitioning Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. dog from leg bites to sleep, so it, it was going sideways, and I felt <laughs> so bad. Oh my god! But that, that that's one of the many many cool stories we have, yeah. and yeah. and I, I I have to say how how I found you, man. That was a uh, you know, there was at the time we're talking early nineties. There was right. a magazine, Dog Sports magazine, yeah. right. I can't remember what was the guy's name. He was in in Mike McCowan. Val- yes, he was act. He, he was, was in Vallejo, I'm, right? I mean, you know, I'm an old guy, but really, he, for instance, he started Shuts in USA magazine. He's the one that laid out that format for the magazine. He published other magazines too. That was his business, but he laid out the format for that magazine. And because of that magazine, there was so much growth in the beginning. Oh yeah, no question. And that's an issue that the clubs nowadays have no idea what they're doing, how to promote our sport. My God, it just makes I'm not. It makes me sick. Yeah, they're I don't just, know. They just they just walk around like, doyoy, you know. I mean, come on. But anyway, that's an. I mean, I could yeah. talk about that for a long time. Okay, why is it the number six blind? sold the rights the number six blind at the national sold you can put your company's logo on number six blind 500 bucks you know freddy's cleaners freddy's healing club whatever you want to put yeah. the hurdle is sold too. 1500 dollars. Yeah. your company logo there two thousand dollars okay uh, yeah you know so off i'm on this tangent i this is an old man's most beautiful dream and god i have this dream so bad and actually johannes grava was the first one to put this dream in my mind I would love so much for USA to have like 
a national headquarters somewhere like in and and think about it folks i'm not saying this because i live in ohio but really somewhere like ohio or indiana um, illinois is kind of hot those places land is still cheap okay and you can and you have you can have a mid-sized city buy a piece of property outside of the place have it as usa headquarters have it as the most friendly dog place in the in america you can rent that place out mm -hmm. you can have the usa office there you can have the indoor facility the nationals and all those events should travel around absolutely but every couple of years here you got you got the perfect right. facilities all these other clubs who need a place Less and less and less. There's less places to show your dog, okay? But if man, it's my dream for USA to have a place like this. Okay? I thought it was But, once in a while there is that conversation. It comes up in a conversation, but it seems like it gets stalled. It never goes further than that. Well, our leadership has, you know, and again, I'm an asshole. But all those guys want to do, they, it's, it's funny to me. And it's good. I like that we have leadership that wants to train dogs. That's a good thing. But uh, maybe they're only lost in that. <laughs> maybe that's all they're saying is that team. Okay. Right. And, and, uh, but anyway. You Let know. me go back to that Dog Sports magazine because I, I want to I'm I'm tell everybody how, how we met. So, so I go back. I, I, come, I come to the States. I'm an electrician. I'm like, okay, I'm going to find a job. I start looking around. It's just very hard to find a job, especially as an electrician. The, The voltage is different, everything's different, the codes. <laughs> I get a job at Guide Dogs for the Blind. Oh, cool. And from there, because I was, I was trying, as you were talking, I was trying to think how in the hell I got my hands on Dog Sports Magazine. Because I didn't, when I came, I didn't know nobody. So it was from somebody from the Guide Dog School that handed me that magazine. The very first magazine that I got, Dean. You were on the cover. You, <laughs> you, uh, uh, Duffy, and what was your girlfriend at the time? You, man, you had Penny. all these Penny cool, McGinnis. cool girlfriends always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Penny you, was great. Yeah, you, Penny, and Duffy on the cover. Right. A, each one of you holding a blind. I, I wish I had this because that was a, a cornerstone of, of my evolution, you know. And the big title on the cover was Next Time in the Park Near You. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's what you we... guys were doing. Right. And, and I'm like, oh, wow, there's people that do it. Now I need to find out which park are we talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I had to do, I went to Vallejo. I had to talk to the guy. Okay. And, and somehow... I think, I don't know, was it Contra Costa? Was it somewhere I found you exactly like that? You guys just uh -huh. drove in, uh -huh. put up the blinds, yeah. and everybody yeah. lined up, and we had an amazing time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, yeah. okay, this is, yeah. this is my house. <laughs> it just felt, felt perfect. Um, but that's how far we go. Now, I, I, I want to, like, because you, man, you've, you've, done IGP and shoots one with quite a few different dogs, but from where I remember, it was Rottweilers, and it was mm -hmm. you and Wayne Simanovic, right. and it was, a, right. I mean, you, you guys were really doing it with Rottweilers, right. and it was a big right. deal, and you were competitive with everybody. It wasn't like how it's today, you know, the, the breeds are, some breeds are going out unfortunately and and that's a different conversation but tell me about your rottweiler time because that's a, that was okay. a interesting well, times man. well anyway i i really want to first thing say but believe me uh, my dogs are german shepherd dogs okay before the rottweiler time real quick i'm not going to go into all that 1979 i was hot champion to usa nationals with my german shepherd dog uh -huh. anando did many great things and but with the rottweiler deal okay uh, in the 90s it was a rottweiler craze everybody had to have one okay there uh also too you know i've made all these were i've made uh, 20 world teams with three different breeds of dogs i've never owned any of those dogs 
people give me dogs, pay me dogs, to, money to train dogs, okay? That's what I do. That's what I did then. Yeah. I was really one of the first persons to do. I don't know how to do anything. I, you know what I'm saying? If my tire, if my car is, has a flat tire right now, I got to call somebody. If that toilet don't work in this house, I got to call. I don't know how to do anything. This is what I know to do. Plus, I've been very frank. Ever since I was a young guy, I don't like to be told what to do. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm different that way. Okay, I don't, I don't play well with others. I don't exist in a company format. Uh, but anyway, let me get back to it. Anyway, with the Rottweilers, uh, it was a Rottweiler craze. Okay. Uh, uh, dogs weren't expensive. All dogs in general weren't ex expensive in those days as they are now. OK. And what happened with Rottweilers in America, for instance. OK. Uh, one of the first Rottweiler World Championships was like 1991 or 92. I forgot. OK. And we went there. An American guy won it, a guy named, he trained in our club, South County Shutson Club, a guy named Ron Gordon. He won that thing, okay? And the American team, I mean, they robbed us. They had to rob us to make sure those Germans won. But why did that happen? Anyway, with the Rottweilers, uh, that Rottweiler World Championship, that first one, that was a really, that's a lot of great stories about that. Wayne was on the team, uh, Ron Gordon, who won the Rottweiler World Championship, a woman named Sue Borgen, really yes, good Rottweiler, yes, yes, man, really no good Rottweiler in protection. Uh, twice I've been the helper at the Nationals. Only twice I was I, I was maybe taken down, and that fucking Rottweiler almost took me down on the long run. He almost took me down. But no, that was a great team. And and again, to think of, about Rottweilers in the '90s, you know, there was people who wanted them, who would pay money to good trainers to train them. There was an interest in that. Uh, later on, after that, two years later, we won the Rottweiler World Championship yes. in Austria. Okay. And we did, I had a different dog, a tremendous, I didn't own him, a very well to do real estate developer, owned the dog. His name was Arco, tremendous animal. I mean, ah, you exactly. know, um, I've been very blessed in my life that I've, you know, trained good dogs of all breeds. And there's good dogs in every breed. Okay. And, I was so happy, uh, you know, that I watched a little bit of the FCI, and there was an Airedale doing yes, protection. Yes, two of and, them this time. And the, I only saw the long bite on one of the Airedales, and it was really nice. And let me say something before that, too. The helper was very fair in giving the dog a chance to demonstrate his good. Well, he's a good boy. You know what I'm saying? There was no Mickey, shicky, stupid ass shit, you know? And maybe the dog wasn't a rocket ship or all this other stuff. But the dog did it really nice from gripping to outing to everything, okay? And also the helper allowed the dog to do this, okay? Yes, allowed them. But, That's a very good point how you're saying that. Very true. You know, and uh, um, uh, uh, but anyway, back in the day with the Rottweilers, you know, it was just people, you know, they had, mo had money. And, you know, what did I do? I took how well, many of them three of them or three or four of them to rottweiler world championship and yeah. all this other stuff the best one i ever i had the first one i ever had was alf Van hamburger michael was his name tremendous animal little quick story mm -hmm. i won the regionals in california with him and in those days northern california we would kick your ass oh okay, this was a sport, place for you know sure. and when i won that regionals it was an sv judge first he says to me i've never seen a he says how did you get that rottweiler to work like that i've never seen a rottweiler do that shit and then ivan you know uh, two months later uh just like three weeks before the rottweiler world championship i was training them and it was like perfect in training for those days and people got to understand that context exactly really good and any sport you always got to understand that context okay but the the dog was mechanically correct Doom, 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 doom. But I could see something was wrong, okay? And I went to do a seminar, and I told Penny, go get him checked out. Uh, Penny calls me and goes, Dean, uh, uh, we got bad news here. This dog's got a, can't, he's got a tumor in his leg, and he's got to get his leg cut off. And I'm like, what? Shit. And this is like two weeks before the world championship with this dog. And anyway, that was maybe the best one I ever had. But in the 90s, there was a lot of good. There was a uh, on that Rottweiler team that won the Rottweiler World Championship, a really good trainer named Mitzi. I wish I remember Mitzi. I don't remember her last name, but she was a really good dog trainer. And uh, uh, 
No, in those days, again, you know, they were, again, there was an interest there. So, you know, there was, there was good Rottweilers, you know, you know, it's one of the reasons I'm an old beat up man from all those Rottweilers I worked in those days, but you know, yeah, that's for sure. But, but listen, I, I really want to say something too. Like right now I have a Doberman. Okay. Yes. And I'm very happy with my Doberman and I can't wait for the future to come. I mean, I'm like just biting at the bit, but that's uh, a Doberman number two. Cause you just, right. you know, Oh, it's not, I, yeah. yeah, I mean, actually, it's farther than that, but it, oh, after yeah. my last one, which was really good. But what I'm saying is, is, is because, and I think of this too, I think it's because of the training is so good with, around the world because people can learn because the internet, you know what I'm saying? And you see good training every place, really good understanding of the dogs. And consequently, uh, that I, I see, I mean, I don't go nowhere, I don't see nothing, but a little bit I see, I see some good dogs, I see some good Dobermans, I see some good Mallies, you know, and of course you see good Shepherds. Roddies, they're not so popular now, so anyway. Yeah, and uh, and the boxers went away. Yeah, you know, it's it's again. You never see those breeds. It's 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 uh, you know, it's 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 hard in America with our our sport is demanding. It's it's a lot easier to follow. You want to enjoy your your dog. You want to do a biting sport. Okay, uh, a lot of them maybe are a little bit easier to do than ours. And speaking of the shepherds, you. You're national champion. Mm -hmm. uh, you've, I mean, bunch of times podium, bunch, like, I don't even know how many times you've been to right. world championships. Like, uh, we, have shared, <laughs> we have shared the podium quite a few times. Yes. Ivan and I tr tied at the nationals one year. Okay, he was first and I was second. Okay, he had his Malamon. I had my dog Rex. Yeah. And it was right after 9-11. And, and it was one of the beautiful moments in my life is I loved my dog Rex. He was so beautiful. Yeah. And he was a mean little son of a bitch, too. <laughs> also, he was really cool. He was a crazy little bastard. He was those a cool dog. Those those Cathago dogs can be, uh, I'll tell you this story about Rex. I'm going to tell you another story about Rex. Uh, for anyone, when I got done in obedience, it was right after 9-11, you know, and if people got to remember what the world was like then, okay? And it was a really cold, clear night, October night in Boston, and the sun was going down. And I got done with my obedience, and I come back to the crowd, and the joy on the people's faces, the applause, not, not me, not about me. The happiness my dog brought to those people. Yes. My God, I was just like, man, this is the coolest thing. This is the cool. And I remember there was a couple of ladies and they were just clapping so happy, you know. I mean, that, that was a really cool deal. That was a really cool deal. Those were, I mean, man, they were interesting times. And I don't know why. I mean, we will never probably know why and how things change, but. Like there, there, there was a, a, and I don't know. Maybe we're just too old thinking but, and looking at the old times in this through a good lens. Always, I mean, remember how big the trial was. Remember, uh, remember helper tryouts. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was as as big event as the competition <laughs> yeah, itself yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah would... you know you know Ivan, i i know uh i know a little about what you're talking about right now and again i don't i'm not a hanger arounder i don't go so much now no more okay but i know back in the day first of all man i can remember on uh saturday night okay yeah. at the nationals the parties we would have the Holy parties Toledo! yes i mean come on. we would party to you know we would party to five i don't know what kids do nowadays maybe they take to get tattoos and go to sleep i don't know but man you know the parties would go on forever you know and i mean and uh uh some things have gotten better you know i i have thoughts about helper tryouts too you know about that uh um um i don't like the uh let me say this about helper tryouts uh, uh uh they need to have ratings just for the long bite where you get a rating just for that okay they give the rating away much too easy Okay. You mean the helper uh, itself or the dog? The helper the itself. Helper, the right? helper itself. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. get rated as you're officially, you can do the long bite, okay? And they give those ratings away, that national level rating away much too easy. 
It's too hard to attain. It's ridiculous. You got to have like so many dogs in your book. Guess what? If you show up the New York Yankees and you hit five home runs, they sign you to a contract. Yes. They don't give a shit about how many minor leagues yes. you played in. There needs to be some validation. When you before. recognize talent, yes, right? Exactly. There needs to be some validation before, absolutely. Okay, but I would just like to, what I would like to see is, first of all, it's harder to attain that rating. And then once you have that rating, you get a number. It has nothing to do with your ability. That's just your number six guy to get that rating. And then you have a rotation system. And that means your number's going to come up in the rotation. And at that rotation, you pick four guys. And then the judge picks the two he wants. But at least you know your name is going to be in the rotation. I've been helper twice at the Nationals. It's an honor. It's an honor to be the helper. To, my God, I can tell you, I remember one time Gary Hanrahan's dog hit me and almost knocked my lungs out the back of my chest, okay? Yeah. It's an honor. And these guys who've worked to attain that level, they should have a chance to have an, this honor. But having helper tryouts already starts the trial out with all this. Who's this guy? Who's that guy? This guy knows this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Stop all that. Stop it. You, all this needs to be thought. So many aspects in our sport about no, 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 no. You understand? You get that number. You get your shot. The judge don't want you that day. That's fine. You've got to work that time, but you get your shot. Go ahead. We'll talk about something else. Yes. Very good one. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is how it was. Uh, I mean, and, and that's, it, it always, there is controversy around how to select a good helper for competition right, because right, it's so right. fucking important. Like we put so it's much everything. time. I mean, it's it, everything. It, it's it's everything is exactly the right way to put it. I, it it mm. really is everything because that guy is responsible for the, mm. for, for your dog. Man. You and know. your dog is, is your fucking yeah. dog. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, it's, it's, um, and, and I'll tell the story. I don't care. Um, Ivan and Mark and I, we were at Mark's house a couple of years back before the AWDF. And Mark's dog, Hector, is a beast. He is a beast. I ain't working that mother. He'll cut, I mean, what is he, like 90 pounds besides that? Okay. So Mark, he's, and I'll use a San Francisco word, he's a little bit feeling snake about doing the long bite with this dog. Yeah. Okay. Because first of all, he don't want nobody to hurt him. And Mark's a lot like me. He don't want any Tom, Dick, and Harry working his dog. He knows that training is just as good as any other training. The helper is just as important to that shit as you and that fucking ball. So anyway, so we're training before, okay, and Mark doesn't do long bites with Hector because of all these things I just said, okay? You remember this, Ivan. Oh, yeah. So a couple of days before the deal, we're training there, and I forgot maybe somebody did, maybe Mark did one first himself. And the dog dove under the sleeve, not because he was nervy. He needs to learn how to target. He was just like a crazy fucker <laughs> running down the field. I'll just bite you when I can find you, okay? You got to teach him that. Everybody knows this. You got to teach him how to target, okay? And thank God I even put the sleeve on and did some targeting with the dog. The dog still jumped onto the arm in the trial, but I hope Mark learned something that day. It was a good, okay. good, these are, these were amazing times too. I mean, we, we have to keep them going. I just watched you on, on your Facebook working mm -hmm. dogs again. I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> melt my heart uh, seeing shit like this, you know? You know, right now, Ivan, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really pumped. Okay. I have a tremendous obedience coach now. My God, this woman, I mean, she, her shit. I've seen a lot of people train dogs. I'm an old man. I've seen a lot of stuff. Okay, this woman could, and also too, um, you gotta, have, you know, you gotta have a team. You gotta have a coach. You gotta have an honest coach. Tell you a real quick story. I was watching somebody who made the team. Really good dog trainer. Really good shepherd dog. And I just went to watch because they have a good helper, and I wanted the helper to work with my dog. And I was watching this guy train his dog. Okay, and he has a spotter watching watching him, and the dog does a slow sit and a slow down. And his spotter says it was marvelous, okay? Well, two weeks later, guess what? In the qualifier, he had a slow sit and slow down. Well, what the hell? Come on, spotter. Be honest, you know? Right. Tell me my shit don't stink, okay? That's your job, all right? But besides, no, I have a tremendous obedience coach right now. Um, I forgot what you asked me. I'm sorry. Tell me about the dog. How old is it? What, my Doberman? Yeah, yeah. 
My new one? Yeah, the new one. It, uh, she's like t almost three oh, years old. It's a female. Oh, yeah. She's All something. Right. She really rocks. Uh, what happened, okay, I had my other Doberman, you know, for those people now I talk about. I won the Nationals with him, Keeper. Uh, one of Keeper, the great disappointments right. of my life is I missed two Doberman World Championship with him because of, of COVID. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And he was a really, Keeper's a really great dog. I know. I dog. saw you. I saw you with you him. Know, just, you know, he was like a golden retriever. And also, too, his a, a, a Doberman genetically must have a super grip. If they don't from the beginning, forget it. Okay. But once they have that genetically, And what I mean genetically, it's born that way. Uh, they have, they're some of the best gripping dogs there is. There's this, uh, and I want to say this too, I love this statement. Oh, only certain helpers can work Dobermans. Fuck you. Come on. A good dog is a good dog. Is, there's traits. Sure. Okay. There's traits and you train different dogs and you know this shit. Right. But don't tell me that you got to be ordained in a certain breed to dog train them. It ain't like this. Okay. But anyway, um, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You uh, have to, you have to, when, when you have a good dog, it's a, it's a good dog. Right. And anyway, with, with the Dobermans, uh, this dog, okay, I had Keeper, and actually uh, the lady that owns the Dobermans, when I went to evaluate Keeper, he was about nine months, ten months old. His sister was better, but I didn't want her. She was too crazy. I just said, no, I didn't. Like, she'd jump over a six-foot fence, and I said, I can't have that shit. So anyway, the Doberman I have now was out of her. Uh, I'm exceptionally, we'll see, I don't want to say no more than that. She's a really good dog. Uh, she has a tremendous natural grip. Uh, I have a little bit of an issue about her barking. Dub Dobermans, I describe them a lot like this. You have hounds and you have terriers, okay, mm. and their temperaments, okay. The terriers want to chew your ass or stupid animals. They might do good obedience. The hounds are, are lazy, uh, big, oafy. Uh, the president of the IDC, the Dorman Club, just wrote this thing about our dogs are too oafy, too big, all this bullshit. But anyway, um, uh, uh, but if you get a cross between those, you can get a really nice dog. The problem with Dobermans is they're too brittle. They're not designed well. Right. The, way they're, the way they're built, okay, the body is too big that stresses their ligaments, especially right. in the rear end. Right, okay? the, the body, the yeah, rear. that's a very good point. I, mm -hmm. Like, I always look at them and I admire how they're built, but I know that the body has a weak point. It's not that every, everybody yeah. has weak points, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, but mean, I know what you're talking about. Believe me, in that breed, there's more perversions than there is in other breeds, okay? And in that breed, it's... You know, it's just, it gets like so many, once you go into just evaluating a dog the way it looks, how big can a girl's tits be? You understand what I'm saying? You know, it's ridiculous. Right. Okay. And so, but anyway, uh, she's a good dog. I really like her. We'll see. You know, I, I, I'm very lucky. I have a, tr I want to say again, I have a tremendous obedience coach. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I, um, uh, uh, no, it's going to be good. That's anyway. amazing to like, that's, that's the whole the cool thing about what we do no matter how old no matter how many world championships no matter how there is always something to learn something that yes, intrigues you something yes, that Ivan. excites yeah. you something that's yes. like yes 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 Ivan. It's and again it's, be, it's because it's a competitive sport you know and if you you know there's an old saying in american baseball from a tremendous baseball player you better look forward because if you look back somebody's going to catch you you know mm -hmm. and, and that's what's so beautiful about our sport and really being an old guy i've seen such a tremendous evolution in this and in the uh, and that the and the judges have to maintain this that the dog has to again be in that performance obedience you know the obedience must be exact but the dog must show a performance in this and and also too and i'll say one other thing to the handlers i know it's hard to be it's hard your nerve i just had a new guy bless his heart he went to his first regionals you know what i'm saying mm. and he was like man my first <laughs> regional and he did When I went to the track, but I pulled first, and I was so nervous, I didn't know what to do. And I know all that. I know all that, guys. But really, uh, understand the dog. He doesn't understand. He thinks anything that you feel the dog caused. 
Try to get over your nerves. Learn to be happy. Learn to be happy when you show your dog. Radiate. Also, too, I like to think that my radiance is going to take over the judge. But that's just my crazy shit, okay? I, if you see me sometimes, you'll see I'm ha Joe Happy out in that field. And the judge goes, hey, this guy's kind of crazy. I'll give him a few more points. Go ahead. Smart. Ask me something. That's smart. Plus, it needs to be this way, Ivan. You understand? I'm so conscious. I want, I want, I want 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, everybody to enjoy what we... A real good friend of mine, Roland Seibel, who I admire tremendously, a German, German judge, he said to me, Dean, because I'm so worried that my grandson won't be able to have the fun we had in the dog sure. sport. You sure. know? That it's, is true. That, you know, and, and really, it, because... And it's not just a personal fun, you know, it's, it's, we're doing, man, we are doing, and I don't, we are doing really good things for the future in our sport. This is what makes dogs good. Go ahead. Ask me something else. I'm sorry. So let's do, um, hmm. let's go back California times. Sure. Sure. These were, these were special times for me and I'm sure for you too. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Like you, you were, you were you own the whole Bay Area. Like, I mean, from, from up north, from above San Francisco, all the way down to above San Jose, uh. there was a schedule. And somehow we all knew where Dean's gonna be to work dogs. Uh -huh. And here I am working at Guide Dogs for the Blind, walking around all day long, driving through Golden Gate Bridge in mm. huge traffic. Yeah loading my dog and heading back to San Jose in the biggest traffic on 101. <laughs> yeah. That takes me, uh, even back in the 90s, it would take uh, me an hour to get there. Uh, and here we are at 11 p.m. Yeah, starting yeah, to yeah. fucking train dogs. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, here is Dean making the list how he's going to work the dog so he kind of puts him in the group so he doesn't wear himself out with a bunch of strong dogs so he kind of balance them out. Yeah. But there were so many dogs and so yeah. many days. Yeah, yeah, and you guys yeah. lived in that van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, you know, Ivan, uh, before that, let me, let me uh, you know, you want to talk about history. So, so let, me, let, me, let me go back really to the, to the beginning. Okay? Please. In 1979, before that, okay, before that, uh, when I was in college, okay, a friend of mine had a German Shepherd and I wanted one and I got one and he was a shitter. He wasn't a good dog, but I wanted to know why he was a bad dog. Okay, he was the best dog in obedience class because I like doing this, I like doing that, but out every, and he got worse and worse and worse in his temperament. Okay, so I wanted to find out why. And in those days, there was no internet, there it wasn't like now. Okay, so all we had, their information, you talked about Dog Sport Magazine. It was very. There was no information. Right. There were mag. There were books you would read, and you'd see pictures of these German dogs. Let me say something else. I have a keen interest in history. Uh, I love history. It's fascinating to me how this dog training sport grew out of that culture in Germany. That is some really weird shit, man. That is sure. some really weird shit. But anyway, let me continue. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, after I wanted to know my, why my dog was a turd, okay, why he was no good, and and uh, I had a friend, uh, his name was Val Durr. Uh, I still hope he's alive. Really good guy, man. Really good guy. Anyway, and uh, he had a really nice dog, uh, a shepherd dog. Anyway, there was a magazine, uh, Dog World. And there was ads in there, just a few ads with these German dogs, okay? And then you'd read books, whatever, about these German dogs, okay? And then um, um, I remember reading, I read in the LA Times, uh, Schutzen training. Uh, oh God, I wish <laughs> I had, a, I wish I had a camera in my brain to show to tell you what I'm going to tell you now with an actor named Timothy Carey. 
Timothy Carey was this, he always played the heavy. He was in a, a lot in a show called Beretta. And he was always, he played like this ghoul kind of guy. He was really this weird character, okay? So there was shuts in training with Timothy Carey. So I said, cool, I'm going to go out there and watch this stuff. So I got there. This guy was a character. I could tell you, Tim, this is, uh, I could tell you a lot of Timothy Carey stories. So anyway, he wanted out, he wanted all this money to train the dog. And I was just a poor kid and I couldn't pay that shit. Uh, maybe later I'll think of some good Timothy Carey stories. But anyway, so uh, one thing leads to another, one thing leads to another. And somehow I found out about, I remember, I saw, somehow I found out about Schutzen in San Francisco, the Peninsula Canine Corps. And, 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 you know, guys, everybody likes to talk about the old days, but I talk about the, the USA headquarters. I'd love to see a Hall of Fame. There's a man named yeah, Gernon Riedel. Sure. And there's everybody in this country owes uh, uh, to Gernot Riedel. He was the ultimate character. But he did so much for the sport. He was one of our first judges. He did so much for the sport. I went up there. I watched those guys train. I came back to Los Angeles. And then somehow or another, the sport was just getting going. There was isolated clubs in different places in America, but they really didn't have like a national organization. And then in 76, United Shuts and the Clubs of America, these different clubs, mainly influences by Gernot Riedel and his group in San Francisco, uh, Paul Hombach, who was the character of characters in Wisconsin, uh, a guy, crazy-ass German, Dr. Strasser in Washington, D.C., some other guys, uh, they got together and they started United Shuts and Clubs for America, and right away, man, that shit took off like wildfire. Why? Because we had German Shepherds, and everybody loves German Shepherds, and that's what we're missing right now in our advertising, our sport, those dumb shits. Let me continue. So anyway, <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, uh, so now it's 1970. I don't know. I've got my first puppy, uh, and I was very lucky about. That. You talked about Dog Sport Magazine. Okay, uh, the guy who started Shuts in USA Magazine was named Mike McCowan, and because of that magazine. That promoted our sport. You understand? You had advertising right in front of the look. Shuts and you will say, look at these German shepherds doing this shit. You can do it too. Okay. Yeah. So Mike had a litter of puppies. All right. And I wanted to get a puppy. And I was lucky because the first litter was from a show line dog. And I didn't know that in those days. But his second litter was from a work. And that dog was national champion that Cliff Holcher had trained, a dog named Cliff. And Phil won, like, the first Nationals with him, like, in 77, maybe 76, something like this, okay? But my puppy was from that dog, okay? So, what did I have that other people didn't have? I had a good dog. So, when I would go to seminars, people, the Germans wanted to help me because they, I had a good dog. They're not just some shitter, you understand? Oh, my God, what are you doing with this shitter? I can't do anything with this dog. It's a waste of time. So, anyway, now the clock turns ahead. Uh... Uh, I joined one of the first seven clubs ever in USA. There were seven clubs started USA, San Fernando Valley Schutzen Club, Tom Mitchell, Phyllis Leakey, some crazy ass people. I didn't like, it was very, I still have a hard time. Uh, dog sport was very difficult for me in the beginning because I'm a hippie from San Francisco. Right. Okay. And I have those <laughs> values very deep in me. Okay. I do not like to, I don't like sexist men. I don't like racism. I, I, and, and I don't like negative energy. It's very difficult for me to be around those atmospheres. But I, there was a couple of great, great individuals. Roger Strout and the coolest guy. Oh, my God. I'm glad this is coming back to me. A guy <laughs> named Joe Rendon. Joe Rendon was the coolest guy in the world. This is how I decided to be Dean Calderon when I met Joe Rendon. Okay. This is maybe 77 or 78. We're having a seminar. So I'm going to the seminar, and on the sideline, there's Joe Rendon. Joe Rendon's about 55 years old, this Mexican dude, real dark Mexican dude. And Joe Rendon had been in prison in, in Texas for two joints, like for 20 fucking wow. years, okay? But how he got out early, he would let the dogs chase him, okay? But he got so good at it, the fucking dogs couldn't catch him, okay? <laughs> so Joe Rendon... In those days, I mean, think about this. This is 77, 76, 78. If your dog didn't bite Joe Rendon, it ain't going to bite nobody, 
Okay, so I'm walking up the seminar on the sidelines. There's Joe Rendon. He's sitting on a blanket. He's got like three really nice teenage girls sitting around him. He's smoking a great big joint, and he's doing the rap. And I look at that, and I said, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to be just like Joe Rendon. You know, he was a cool dude. I love but anyway, uh, after to lead one thing to go to another, uh, I had a really good dog. Uh, Nando was my first dog. I won the hot championship in 79. It was the third national championship in San Jose. After that, I met... And I didn't with like Nando. I only remember like the name will always come up as a <laughs> as a backstory. You know, yeah, that's yeah, how I remember. Great, it. great Nando story. Okay, I mean, uh, 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 I'm I don't uh, re- just a quick not uh, at national training seminar. A great, great trainer named Renhard Lindner. My God, he, what he taught me about tracking. I'm not going to say about this. I'm, I got to keep my mouth shut because I'll start saying things. People get angry. But he really knew shit about tracking. He was in a, a, a seminar. And those custom police guys, they knew how to use that stick in protection. Mm. Okay? How to block dogs, how to smack them in the head to get more aggression. Understand in those days, in the critique and the trial, the last word said were hardness, courage, fighting drive. And then they gave a system, one to ten. And thank God they don't say that no more. You can't say those words. There'd be no more dog sport if you say those fucking words. You got to understand that. But in those days, they said those words, okay? So fighting drive, the demonstration of that. And also in my little bit, what I'm seeing nowadays in dog sport, the judges are understanding there's got to be some, they don't say it. But there's got to be some fighting drive there, too, in the protection phase. It just can't be flat on the arm like you're just glued on like a Correct. turkey. But anyway, uh, Renhardt Lintner was given the seminar, you know, and I had learned some stuff. And I could tell you more about that, too. But anyway, and talking about Nando, he, and, and he says to Dean, he goes, Dean, get that Nando stick. Was, in those days, we had a reed stick, okay? Oh, yeah. We used reeds. And there was a great big, thick bamboo stick about this big. And that was called the Nando stick, okay? She get a whop dogs in the head to keep them clean in the blind, the blind. okay so anyway and that was the nando stick but anyway let me go on uh, uh i want to really talk about egon valrath okay man is, uh, what egon is after- a definitely name that needs to be mentioned yeah i mean i can't tell you guys enough about egon valrath okay really uh the valrath family uh somebody said they were like the kennedys and and egon and it's I, I really want to make the positiveness that he brought to our sport and how he brought this, okay? First of all, we would have a seminar every couple of months with great trainers. With okay? superstars. And, yes. And it became like a deal in Germany that if you didn't get invited to Egon's house, you weren't shit, okay? <laughs> and Egon, I mean, I'm telling you. And another thing that we were smart about and later on, I remember conversations about this with Reiser and Koning a few years later. Uh, we didn't have one person who lead us, led us to the ring in our nose. You understand? Uh, there's just a three-phrase sport, okay? The border police guys, Renhardt Littner and those guys, they taught us tremendous amount about tracking, tremendous amount about tracking. Don't talk to me about that American that everybody thinks is so famous. Give me a fucking break. Anyway, let me continue. Uh, 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 in protection, it was an evolution, and I'm, there's a lot of names to be talked along that evolution. Uh, uh, I'm kind of lost in thought now. Um, in obedience, uh, eventually the big magnitude jump up was finally meeting Fritz Beeler. But let me get back mm-hmm. to Egon Valrath. Egon had a thirst and a hunger like I did for dog sport. He wanted it so bad. He wanted to learn. He wanted to experience. And also, to every aspect of Egon from that, plus he, he Egon showed up in this country. Uh, he was, I love the story. He, he loved the story about the immigrants. Egon showed up in this country with $500 in his pocket. His son, his son, Margaret, with his son, Martin, was a baby and his wife. He had $500 in his pocket. You tell your story, Egon. Egon was a, was a steel, was a metal worker. So he goes to San Jose and gets a job, but he don't know how to do anything because it's all in meters, you know, and English yeah. is, is English, is in inches, you know. And Egon tells the stories like, 
he didn't know what the fuck they're doing. The guy goes, can you read blueprints? He goes, of course I can. Egon's dad, I can tell you so many great Egon stories, man. Jesus Christ. Egon's dad was a metal worker in Germany, okay? And, and so Egon learned the trades when he was a little kid. His, I would be, I guarantee you the Volrath family home was still in Germany with that metal shop in the back, okay? But anyway, uh, so Egon came here with nothing and he, talk about somebody who worked his ass off okay you know and work ethic and everything else he made himself a very nice business super business yeah and that and of course you could have money and that enabled us to do a lot of great things okay and and again we weren't closed mind okay to me it's very simple in this sport the proofs and the points you ain't got no points you ain't got no proof you can talk all you want i'm happy for you to talk to me okay some guys aren't great teachers they can't teach very well, okay? But I can watch you train your dog and maybe learn something. But the bottom line is, if you ain't got no points, there ain't much to talk about. You're a judge. I'm happy for you. We need more of those. Good for you. Especially in those days, they bring some old German over. Good for you. He brought worse. I'm happy for you, okay? You're not going to teach me nothing about training no dog, okay? And Egon allowed this. We had such an atmosphere for this in the 80s in South County. I mean, we had so many experiences, so many times. I was thinking about this today, and I knew I was going to talk to you. One of the most beautiful experiences. with And guys, I mean, how many world teams did we make? How many of us did? First time out. In Egon, everybody thought in the Bay Area that Egon was the buffoon. Mm. All of his buddies thought Egon was the fat, stupid German who played the Constantina. And then Egon hicks up with the stupid hippie guy. What are you doing? And he left their club. He left PCC. We went and took over a new club. He left all of his buddies. And they're like, whoa, what are you doing with the stupid hippie kid? What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. So first time out. We go to, the, in those days, it was called, what was it called? Shuts and Three Tournament or something. It was yeah, what the WGC was is yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We go there to Indiana. Egon's first, Martin's second. Martin's 16 years old. So okay. thank you very much. Okay. And that was just the beginning. And I can go on from there. I yes. forgot what that was leading to. But anyway, uh, uh, no, Egon was just such a marvelous, marvelous. Oh, great story. I forgot. Budapest, 1985-1986, still a communist country. I like, I like history. Egon and Mart, Egon gets 98 points in protection with a show dog, Irk the Jerk, show dog. Sh VA father, VA mother, show dog, crazy motherfucker who Helmut Kohn showed me how to use bite rewards and the e-collar to make this stuff absolute. Another day, another story. Right. Anyway, he gets 98 points in protection. Martin comes out, they're 16 years old, Gets 96 points in protection, okay? And I'm like, yeah. So we're driving through the streets of Budapest, and it's hot like a motherfucker. We got the American flag out the back of the, of the, of the, of the, of the station wagon playing Born in the USA full blast <laughs> with the kids chasing us through the streets of Budapest. And that, you want glory? You can have that glory, or you can stick to your American dog sports and have glory in Topeka, Kansas. What kind of glory do you want? Yeah. What kind of glory do you want? I've walked in the stadium with my team, with the USA team, and the whole stadium going, USA, USA. That's glory. That's magnitude. You want to go to Topeka, Kansas with your leg biting dog? I'm happy for you. That's all I got to say. Go ahead. Ask me some man, Egon, Egon and, and, <laughs> and his sons, man, Thomas and oh, Martin. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let me continue with that. Oh. Egon and his sons. Uh, his son, Martin. Uh, I mean, we, I just can't tell you enough. I'll, we had, okay, another story. We had a guy. Uh, Al Kerr was his name. He was a dentist. And uh, our sport is athletic, okay? And Al was the kind of guy where, like, you pick him last when you pick sides. He gets picked last, okay? But Al was smart. He was a very intelligent, intelligent man, okay? right. exceptionally intelligent man, and he could learn, okay? So Al comes out with it. After Aegon won that spring championship, Martin was second, now we go to the national championship. And I wish I could tell you everything. Maybe one day when I'll die, I'll really tell you everything. Because I knew who it was shaking. I knew who it was shaking, okay? It was basically, man, I could really get people mad at me. 
It was basically some characters from, there's an area that's southern of Michigan and Ohio and those kind of places. Yes. Okay? So these characters decide that there's like this war. And the war is against us. Well, Very fine. true. This was like like the East Coast, West Coast rap story. Right, right, that, right, that's where right. we were, really. Right, right. Okay, you guys want to have a fucking war? Fine. So we show up at the next championship, okay? And we got a new guy. Because you guys haven't even seen yet, okay? And this is the youngest dog ever to win the national championship. Al Kerr goes out there, wins that motherfucker. Martin is second. He got his seventh. And we're like, okay. Let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was more after that. But anyway, uh, Al's dog, uh, Doug was his name, tremendously. W- and see, this is another thing that we knew right from the beginning. Even though Egon's dog was a show dog, he was a genetic freak. Okay. And the training was really, it's not the kind of training that I like to do. Basically, what you do is you attract the aggression. Re- says he was so, um, uh, recently I was watching a video of a very famous show dog named Dingo Vom House Garrow. Okay. And I know some history about this dog. And they showed the protection at the Seeger show. And people are saying, oh, he's nervy as all this shit. And that might be true. But his, in his brain, that dog was really biting that guy. He didn't. He doesn't have the. He didn't have the ancestors of the prey drive like our modern German Shepherd dog has. So in his brain, he was doing his protection. Like I'm going to bite that motherfucker. So that's why he showed a little bit of wavy gravy. Okay, and it was the same thing with Egon's dog, that show dog, that crazy. And a lot of show dogs that will bite you still think this way. He thought he was chewing you up. So we had to work with that. Uh, that's a very hot drive, that aggression, like, eh, and you learn how to cap it with the e-collar, what I like to call the junior, and it worked out pretty good for Egon. Won some championships with that monster. A hundred points in protection to win the Canadian championship and some other things. But anyway, about what Egon, let me continue real quick. Uh, really, the, he needs to be, like recently, I was very disappointed they had the Nationals in California, and I would have named it the, the Egon, Valrath, Gernot, Riedel, Willie Ordner Memorial National Championship. You know, these three guys, you know, I mean, you know, they did so much, you know, and, 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 and it's, and again, maybe it's stupid when you get old to think about the past, but, but, you know, it's okay. Yeah, anyway, yeah. But uh, ask me something else. I'm sorry. How how um man I I just I I almost don't want to interrupt you because it's so like it just brings so much memories and it's so cool <laughs> like I I mean we were really fortunate and I've, I, I, everybody has their times and everything but mm-hmm. Egon truly was instrumental for the whole sport in the country but especially as you said in in California we were so fucking fortunate to have because there was no internet we yes, and exactly. he would exactly. bring the best of the best right. for three days four days five days and we would sit i remember us watching helmut reiser we sit right. and he goes into behind the san jose club on on we're all on the bench having drinks and yeah. whatever and yeah. he's on the big white board yeah. Talking shit, and we're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. and then yeah. we go and we train, and it's just amazing times. Yes, but yes. you yeah. know what? I, like I, I'm curious, wh- how how did the where, who who helped you, who guided you with the helper work? Like how did that all start? Because I mean, eventually you became somebody on your own, I mean, working so many dogs, so many different dogs, the shitty dogs, the excellent dogs. Yeah, first of all, let me say something, first of all, okay. You know, uh, helper work, uh, sure, um, you gotta have physical gifts, okay? And I, you know, God gave me some physical gifts, okay? Um, When I was young, I was a pretty good national natural athlete, you know? But I think more important than that, is my extreme liberal mm. raising education. I, I come from a Christian family. I'm not a Christian, but I. one thing that grabbed me so hard about Christianity that is lost is compassion. 
okay? You have to have compassion. You have to have compassion. And a lot of people say, oh, Dean, that's a dickhead. He told me dog was a shitter and he was all mad. I mean, that's true, too. But believe me, there's many, many, many people I've helped from nothing. You got to have compassion for that dog and that handler. Okay, really, you really got to do. Your job as a helper, that's why you're called the helper. You have to make that dog the best possible dog you possibly can be. Uh, the Germans have a saying, okay, you have to be able to train an army of dogs, okay? Not it, even a green beret has to be trained, but you got to be able to train some cooks too. Because if you can't train those cooks, man, what are you going to do with those green berets? You understand? And also, too, our sport is, uh, I'll get back to health work in a minute. You know, it, I understand it's hard for people in America because you have a job, you have a family, you got to work, yada, yada, yada. How many hours do you have to dedicate yourself to this, okay? So you go to the dog club, you only want to have two or three hours a night, you want to go home. On the other hand, uh, we need to be able to train. There's nothing wrong with soft dogs and developing those dogs and building them up. Let me know about helper work, okay? In the very beginning, all right, uh, probably my first real influences was, uh, 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 oh, let me let me think now, was, of course, uh, the Zoll guys. Uh, let me let me get back to something else. Sure, even sure. Before, even even get before that, uh, I met Doug Deacon. Okay? Doug Deacon. And, and Doug Deacon and I actually lived together in California for about six months. We worked for the shyster. The shyster guy came to me and says, Dean, I'm going to buy this big facility. And this is when I learned about it's happened to me a thousand times in my life. Dean, we're going to buy this facility. And you're oh, yeah. Dogs. Yeah, right. That's what I want to do. But anyway, this guy came to me and, wanted, and I was a young guy. So I said, OK, cool. I'll do that. He came to Doug and said the same thing. Quick story about Doug, how I met the how I met Doug, 1978, I think it was, 1980, at the Nationals in Denver, okay? A guy named Fred Shar from Canada had a tremendous German Shepherd dog named Oop Bungalow. Fred comes up to me and goes, Dean, will you work? Oh, I said, sure, man, I'll work, Oak, no problem. Tremendous dog, super, super, super. So Doug's standing there, and he's got this dog named Sheba. And I swear to God, it's like Benji comes to Schutzen. If you ever know what Benji looked like, it was just looked like Benji. Okay. So, so Doug says, will you work my dog? And those days I was like this young Nazi crazy kid. And I'm like, okay, you know, so, you know, dog barks, nice escape bite, reattack. I can't hit her with the sticks. She just looks like Benji, you know, Doug says out, comes in, to sit, and Doug just gets in my ass. You hit my dog with the stick. Blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, dude, you want to play that game? Fine. Benji comes, whop the shit out of her. She bites even fucking harder. I'm like, holy fuck. And then you never saw this in those days. Doug waits 10 minutes, comes out, brings her on the field, and does the best obedience I've ever seen in my life. I go back to the hotel, and everybody's like, well, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. But you guys ain't seen shit. I just saw Benji comes to Shutson, and she's going <laughs> to kick our fucking ass. And sure enough, she kicked our fucking ass, okay? Uh, Doug is a great... I had so many great times. With Man, Canadians. Doug, I have so much respect for him. You know from... I mean, he's so well. Oh, I mean, he's just... But, and it, but like, the way he can read the dog. Yes. You yeah, know? Yeah, it's yeah. like, you, there's when a, you he know, tells you that dog is good... You don't need yeah. to test it anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, really, uh, there's been some, uh, uh, you know, I know we get off on, on target, on off track, but my mind goes, you know, one of the great things that's happened in our sport, I really think, is the judging has gotten a lot better. I really do when I watch it a little bit. Okay. And Doug was one of those to can help control obedience behaviors that the obedience must be shown in a natural format you can't be extreme one way or the other and your pace all these things okay yeah. also too i mean uh, this is really one thing after um uh, i know I, I was supposed to talk about help work but let me no, go no, back no, no, talk no, about dude, we, we can go all over the place okay. I'm, I'm anyway you know sometimes like one of my biggest pet peeves in obedience i mean i can't stand hand or help it just drives me nuts right okay it drives me nuts and what drives me nuts too is a judge who allows this head come in on the front you can't eyes front that's simple eyes front okay no, yeah. this is not a club trial we're talking championship time now you're never to look at the dog you know what never means never 
not sometimes, not only on Tuesdays, never, okay? You know what also never means? The dog can't touch you with the dumbbell. I'm right. sorry. It's simple. Never means never, okay? And I watch this, those two simple things. Eyes not front and dog touching the dumbbell. And I watch the inconsistency in championships judging this shit. And I want to sh- I want to go up to the judge and go, what the fuck is wrong with you? And the judges nowadays, you can't question, they got all emotional. How dare you talk to me? You said I made doo-doo. You're a professional. You can't handle a question. Right. You know, a lot of a lot this- of judges don't have the I, I I and that's my opinion. I think they see it but they don't have the courage to to actually stand stand for the rules and for the sport. You know, I don't go that much, Ivan. I just this year I watched some of the qualifiers, you know, and, and some of the judging was a little um uh, again, I think they need to make people understand again the, the I thought Mike Deal showed his dog really well, very ice front, okay, pretty good, okay. I'm not going to say some other handlers. It was embarrassing to me. It was, some, and the judge just let it shut slide. It was like mm-hmm. that's cool. Mm-hmm. It was like you know one group later, you know, and then a couple of the women. I mean, he just killed these women. I mean, what the hell? You know, what are you some kind of? And and it was a couple of women in an obedience, and this one particular woman in protection phase. I mean, dude. Dude, come on, man. What are you talking about? You know, what are you talking about? And uh, uh, you want to, uh, uh, I don't know. I, anyways, uh, let's talk about how. Touching okay. is very difficult, man. It's yeah, like uh, a, it's really, I wouldn't want to do it. I, don't, I mean, it's such a hard job. You know, what an interesting point for discussion. Is it good to have like three judges or just one judge? Right. You know, there's a lot of good points to be made with that, you know. I mean, I pros like, and cons for sure. What's that? There are pros and cons for, yes. for multiple you know, with, judges. With that three judges thinks, I don't like average. You know, I don't like that so much. But uh, then I don't like, you know, you see. But anyway, sometimes in my German Shepherd heart, when there's a really good German Shepherd judge that I admire, I want to have one judge. I want to have his opinion. Yeah. And then next year I want to have somebody else who I admire, their opinion. Yeah. I don't want to be shared opinions. You understand? Because a lot of this is not just black and white. It's what you see that day and what you feel that day, okay? So, but anyway, so, back to helper on, work. No, hold on. Let, ahead, we'll get ahead. to the helper work, but let's, since we're <laughs> on judges, American judges, uh-huh. which one of all times stands out to you that you, you have the utmost, like, that was... That I thought was a good judge? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a hard one. Yeah. I'll you know, tell you mine. And I, I didn't good. know him too much. Oh, fuck. Now I cannot think. Like, I'm so <laughs> bad with names. But you will remember him because he was very good with obedience. He Who, judged, John Mulligan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I only saw John judge a couple of times, but he was one of the first guys yeah. to... Like he was somebody that when he gives me a critique, I was able to go back home and yeah. train the I, I knew what I needed to do. Right. You know? Also to John, I think really defined uh showed people what the rules really were. You understand? These are the rules, and it's only the rules. It's not four strikes, five strikes, two strikes. Just three strikes, that's the rules, okay? And he was very good at that. He was very good at his presentation of the critique. Uh, this is one thing, too, that I would like to see better by some American judges. I don't know what they talk about at the judges' college. It's not my business. Yeah. But the first, for instance, you're judging a dog, and let's suppose this dog makes 94 points overall in obedience. Well, the first adjective out of your mouth should be, this is a very good dog or this performance was very good, and then you justify and you critique that first adjective you gave, you understand? And then each exercise, it's not good enough, or that was kind of nice. No, it's excellent or good, or right. very good. It's not all these well, other words. Put it it's in the not rating. all these other words. It cannot be. Those words do not exist in the judge's evaluation book. It doesn't exist. So how can it be pretty good? It's either good or very good, or whatever, okay? Also, too, a judge can never talk about training in the trial. 
Never. You never try. R- exactly. You know, you can pull the person aside. You cannot and, you know, turn the critique into a mini seminar to show off how much yes. you know as a yeah. judge. This <laughs> is the most <laughs> ridiculous it. thing. You got it. You, and, you know, and I, you know, really, it's so I can imagine how hard it must be going. To, I have again some friends that I admire that I think are great judges, and I say, "Man, what do you do when you go to a club and like all the dogs are really bad, and you're just like, well, what do you do?'" He goes, "Man, you just try to make a good time of it. You know, you just try." I had a friend he went and judged in China, and he said it was just horrible. You know, and they had all these dogs, and they couldn't foose, they couldn't down, they couldn't do anything. You know? okay. Anyway. But anyway, back to helper work. In the beginning, uh, uh, again, I wor- learned a lot from those old guys. Helmut, uh, 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 Renhardt Lintner, uh, not, uh, uh, I like Lintner. Again, uh, there's certain traits in individuals I like. I loved Lintner's ability to teach. I loved his patience with people. I loved his compassionate with people. There was another individual in those days that a lot of people really liked. I didn't like him. Because you don't treat people that way. you got to find a good way. And that's what I liked about Renhardt. And he showed me a lot of tremendous things, okay? Not just in tracking. He showed me how to use that reed stick, how to block the dog, how to use the reed stick to whop him. I don't want to talk about it. I don't show it so much. Mark knows how to do it. T knows how to do it, how to use that reed stick to get some aggression out of that turkey. You yes. want that dog to bark at you? I'll send him in the black. I'll walk him with that stick. He'll bark at me. Yes. People, bless their hearts. You know, bless their hearts. Anyway, that's their business. But anyway, after that, really... Uh, uh, but then you make uh, the dog grow from that. That that yeah, was the key. Yeah, that's a, such a great That was point. the key. I, yes, because you take the edge here, and then it's here. And then and the dog learns to hand it's that way in and every then he con- comes and he knows he's the king yes and it's that way in every contact sport you understand at first it's light and then they learn you know and then it's stronger you know i mean sure and and you know i don't go nowhere i i don't watch nobody but i think maybe this is missing places i think i think okay i have a helper that i like very much a very athletic young man He knows nothing to this type of training, nothing. And right. you can see it in the dogs that he trains. They're trained, but they ain't got no heart. They ain't got no heart. They ain't got no heart. Yes. They got no zoom zoom. You know, they're just like a yank. Okay, they do the routine. Good for you. But back to it. Uh, after that, okay, we started bringing people over and everything, okay. And I didn't like what was going on. And I don't want to say a name. Was somebody, this is when I first went to Egon's, 83. Uh, I didn't like who was a local hero in Northern California. He was not. I didn't like this guy. I didn't like the way he was. I didn't like everything about him. I had seen articles about Helmut Reiser and heard his name, okay? And I and Egon had a guy. His name was Peter Jacobs. Peter Jacobs no, was a hit. Tr- he was a hit. Okay. Yeah, a great fuck. dog man. Another fuck. guy. Uh, he was the head trainer for the park police in Stuttgart. And Peter came over. What a great dude. Peter's... Uh, Uh, there's a tracking technique that I do to this day that Peter showed me where I go backwards in the beginning. People say, you're fucking crazy. Fine. How many times I want tracking? Okay. You just keep telling me that shit. But anyway, and Peter showed me that. Anyway, so Peter, I'm talking to Peter, and I said, you know, Peter, I don't like this other guy, yada, yada, yada. And I said, but what about Helmut Reiser? You know, what do you think? And he goes, well, you know, there's this other guy. His name is Helmut Koenig. Helmut. He's like in between these two guys, okay? And I had heard about Helmut Koenig. He had come to America and done a seminar a couple of years before, and everybody was emotional because they put a lot of pressure on dogs, okay? So I said, okay, let's bring Helmut. And when Helmut came, man, the stuff really got going. You understand the elevation of all of, of all the training. Uh, first of all, much better understanding of how to use the electric collar. Yeah, Helmut much- was in very good at being able to twitch and let it grow instead yeah. of suppress it, right? Yes, yes. And, in, and I mean, and talk about compulsion techniques, you know, how do I physically correct the dog? And Helmut knew that stuff, okay? So also, too, we called Helmut the Iceman. Because what Helmut demonstrated so greatly is you can train and you can correct your dog, but there's no reason to be mad. Why are you mad? Why are you mad all the time? And all these other germs are like mad and mad all the time, and I'm mad. Helmut, we call him the Iceman. He was just cool. Just go correct him, okay? So then, I know, you know the Helmut- Iceman, that's very good, because well, when, when I first saw him, 
I mean, it fits perfectly, but I, I, I would always think of him as somebody very serious. Oh, like, he, he yeah. always paid attention and, and he, he always wanted to put in everything to every dog that he attended to, right? Yes. And, and you know, I, he was another one, too, who could really read dogs. And let me, uh, you know, you talk about how work. I'll tell you about some tremendous experiences in my life. Uh, being in the blind with Renhart Lintner behind me, and as the dog is coming in and barking at me, he's talking in my ear, and he's telling me this, and he's telling me that, and he's telling me this, and I'm like, whoa, cool, you know, just keep on talking, man, just keep on talking to me, you know, I mean, I can remember those experiences, Helmut Koning, again, his calmness, his deliberateness, okay, then after Helmut Koning, there was a lot of guys, but who really, and there's some fools, I can give you a list of fools, there's one guy, who impressed upon, and again, it's, you know, this is why people should go to seminars. I always tell people, go to seminars, don't volunteer your dog. But if you learn one thing that helps you, you learn one thing, because you got to be able to make your own stew. You understand? A little bit of salt here, a little carrots here, a little bit of this here. A guy named Franz Durr came over, and he was like, a lot of people liked him. He was a, I'm not going to say no more about Franz Durr, but... He was I the don't first. think I've heard of, like, well, okay. maybe I do. I, I'm so okay. bad with names that no. I... No, he was, again, he was a guy, and bless his heart, but he, de- he didn't know why, but he showed how important it was for that dog to hold that grip full, constant, dead prey. And that was the first time I really saw that, okay? Then his stick work, we'd, we'd been using the stick, but he took it to an extreme level. If, if you modified it down, how are you using to use the stick and striking the animal to make the grip even stronger? This is weird helper work shit. But more, I don't want to mention that. The most important thing was exhibiting of the dead prey holding. And what I could see then is what the dog was learning was learning was to breathe in and out through his nose. All right. Instead of going like this that are opening their mouth and going, going ha, ha, ha. okay now we and turn being the block satisfied away. not being yes being yes. questioning yes. but being satisfied yes. yeah and, th- and this is this point that you just made we start to understand that later that the dog needed this for a satisfaction he wasn't he didn't know and that's why the word dead prey i've killed it it's dead i've won it's over. It's I don't have to keep going like an idiot and keep kill mode going. I have dead prey. After that, um, at the World Championship in 91 or 92, 93, it was the first time America won the team championship, and I'll be very conceited. People that trained with me had three or four out of the top ten places. Uh, a woman named Renee Lancaster. Renee Lancaster, per- come on. A fucking dog of hers. Oh, Lord, can I tell you stories? Of, he was called the, what did they call him, the 220 Man, dog? Man, she was the, intense, too. Oh, my God. Fuck. The dog and Renee together. Both of them. Obvi- yes. Oh, I get that. <laughs> you know, in those days, people thought we were crazy because we would come out there with Renee in training, and that dog would, like, run the blinds and do everything while we were doing obedience. And then she would turn around and do dumbbells while, like, we were doing long bites and all this shit because we, we had to get him that fucking tight. You know, we had to get him the dog. And, I mean, Renee, her work ethic, I mean, that's yes. the kind of dog you got to train him every day. Every, you know, jogging, da 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 I mean, her work ethic, Renee was tough. She got third place, 99 points. Second place, Greg Bennett, okay. Little, I'm gonna be a, blow my horn a little bit here. They did a really good dog. The job dog's name was Buck. He was a very nice dog, a very good high prey dog. A lot of good German Shepherd dogs. Greg medium, still plays. What? Greg is Arme- still playing yeah. around. Yeah. Is are medium high prey dogs okay that you elevate through good helper work and all that other, and good obedience too. But anyway, so that was Buck. Okay, so that summer he had already done all this good shit with Buck, and he brought him to me. But Buck was biting the wrist for whatever mm. reason. Okay, he was going to the wrist, going to the wrist, wrist. So I worked him a few times, and there's this up and over move that I learned years ago from a guy who was a guy Bernhard Mantle. This is up and over move that I know, and I did that with Buck, and lo and behold, he gets second place at the at the world that year. You know, so good for Glenn Bennett. But anyway, what we were talking about? Oh, 
I saw Rajay won the world championship. Raj, whatever Rajay, Sholen Hurts from Belgium. Yeah. 99 points with a two and a half year old dog. And I watched it and I saw there's something going on here. Something is, this is a new level. He's demonstrated something new. So next year, I go to Belgium. Okay, I go to Belgium and I walk right in there, and you can't ma- want for a nicer man than Roger. Wait, just, oh. just so, so people know what who we are talking. So this is uh, Roger Snower. S- yes. Snower. Yes. Yes. And and with that dog Ori, he he, Ori. he exactly just uh, as Dean saying, he just he made the uh, he skipped two steps and he yes. went somewhere else. He and showed a new level. Everybody paid attention. Yes and, yes. and it was an important time. Yes. So I went to Belgium, you know, and I saw. And it wasn't just him. It was Ronnie and uh, Ronnie Vanderberg. Oh, God, I forgot. All the, Emil Dillon. Really good. Dude. Oh, man. Emil they were, Dillon. the Belgians were fucking oh, destroying. And when it. I went there, I was just like, whoa. There was so much talent there. Yeah. So anyway... And then, you know, Rajay started to show us some really good things about gripping and the importance of this. Uh, uh, the Belgium, the athletic ability of the helpers, too, was so marvelous. I love this. Uh, Rajay would do a thing I would call the Belgium spin, where yeah. he would drive the dog. And every, this is an old hippie saying, every moment is a universe. That's how much you got to be about it. You can't be a bum fuck. Okay, so when you're driving that dog along, if you feel any pulsations in his mouth, instantly you spin around. And as you spin around, the centrifugal force will kick into the animal to make make the grip stronger. Okay, and then once the dog is at the height of the centrifugal force, when you can feel the height of the grip being the most, you crack that fucking whip. Okay, and then he comes around. You drive him a bit, and then what I saw the Belgium guys do is you could slip that dog to sleeve. You could say sit, and that dog sat there, perfect grip, holding that sleeve. And I said, that is dog training, okay? That is some dog training, okay? And that really kicked it up real high, the helper work. I mean, really, really high, okay? Uh, 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 and, and I want to say something else more important to me than anything else, and that's just Fritz Bieler. Okay, there's no man who's more important. You spent a lot of time with him, too. I uh, mean, you went he, so many times back there. I mean, he was, you know, uh, uh, how what can I say about Fritz Bieler? Uh, he is, uh, you know, when I was young, Fritz Bieler was like Elvis, you know, and I, I always wanted to meet Fritz Bieler. I mean, he was like the king. Okay, and I'll never forget Budapest, that first world championship. We were sitting there in the basement there. They had a bar and shit, and the German team is over there, and I'm over here with the Americans, and I'm with Egon, and I said, Egon, look, there's Fritz Bieler. And he goes, yeah, you got to know Egon. He's so cute. Egon was five feet tall and five feet wide. So he walks up to Fritz Bieler and goes, hello, I am Egon. Sticks his hand out. you know, shake, And no one said hello to Fritz Bieler. He's the king, okay? So, he, so they're talking German and shit. So then Fritz says to Egon, tell that young kid to come over here. So he comes over here, I sit down, and he says, uh, and Fritz says something like, some, he said someone had seen me do helper work. Okay, and then, and, and then Fritz, you got to know this guy. This guy is the most intense, uh, borderline manic individual you ever want to meet in your life. So with that, he goes into, and he's all talking German, and Egon's trying to keep up. But he goes into seminar mode, and it goes on for three hours. Mm-hmm. And now we got to go outside at one in the morning in the parking lot. And he proceeds to tell us to get our American dogs, and he says they're fat and out of shape and stupid and everything else. He go gets his dog. What was that dog's name? I wish I could remember. There's some great stories about that fucker. He brings him out, and first thing I notice, that dog's back is like as wide. I'm, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, the muscles in that dog's back, okay? It's two o'clock in the morning, and Fritz is putting on a show in the, sta- in the parking lot, okay? So I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. So turn the story ahead. A year or so later, 
a wealthy man came to me in the Bay Area and said, if you get my son to the Nationals, I'll buy you any dog you want to buy. And that's a story in itself. Uh. <laughs> so I got the kid to the Nationals. The kid was great. I used, The kid was like a freak out kid, you know what I'm saying, you know? And so I would meet him at high school. I'd be out in front of his school and pick that kid up and we'd go train every day because I'm getting important. that dog. It was important. <laughs> I mean, I had to get that dog. <laughs> so anyway... <laughs> So I go to Europe and I get a dog named Axel von der Lindenholly. And, and I, I like to tell stories. So, uh, man, he was crazy. Drive up the motherfucker. So, and there was a guy named Horst Weissel, great big dog broker in those days. So, and I'm looking at a couple of dogs. I said, Horst, I want that one. And, he, and Horst didn't know him. He goes, no, you can't handle that one. He's too much for you. You don't know what you're doing. You can't. Oh, I want that one. I want. So he goes, okay. So I get him. So the first or second day I get him, I go out to track him. I tie him to a tree. I lay the track. I come back. I can't get him off the tree. He's going to kill me. <laughs> so now I got to go back to Horse House and say, Horse, guess what? I can't get him off the tree. <laughs> a good story. Anyway, uh, back to Fritz. Oh, with that, okay. Uh, I knew I'd seen Horse and Fritz hanging out together in Germany. You know, I knew they were buds. So I said to Horse, I said, man, I would like to meet Fritz Beeler. I said, I just, I just want to meet. I met him a couple of years back. I just want to meet him. So we go over to his house, you know, we start talking, ba 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 put the sleeve on, ba ba and man, then it started. And I'm telling you, man, I suffered. <laughs> I can tell you stories. I mean, I suffered, okay? Um, one of the things that Fritz would always do all the time, he would demonstrate something to me. He would always say, the dog cannot suffer from your mistakes. So maybe something in obedience, a move he wanted you to make. He would demonstrate it to you. And then you had to practice that move without the dog. So you could execute it perfect. So I would go back to the hotel at nighttime and practice in the mirror, okay, the move. And for instance, like my, maybe my pet peeve about ice front, because for Fritz Bieler, when I, he'd hit me with stick. I walked down the field, and I looked at the stars, whop, it hit me with that fucking stick. Ice front, fuck that. You know? That's funny. But, uh, but again, the thing about Bieler, what I want to say about him, first of all, his ability to read dogs. Um, uh, and again, everybody's, you got to, in the context of the time, in the context of the time, okay, no one, no one has ever, and it's simple, the proof's in the points. Oh, yeah. No one has accomplished what he, great, great story. Last time USA won the team championship, 08, 07, whatever year it was in Denmark, I was team captain. USA won that championship because the great obedience that Charlie and and, Wayne, and Wallace Payne and T did. That's why they won that world championship. But before the championship, Fritz is in the championship trial. Okay? He's the oldest man yes. with the youngest dog. He had just won the Bundesliga two weeks before. Some dog magazine from somewhere coming up and interviewing me and asking me questions. I'm USA team captain. Who do you think is going to win? I said, I think Fritz Spieler. They go, the German grandpa? Said, you just watch German grandpa. You just watch German grandpa. And he goes out there and wins that world champion. The, the story about that world championship, what people need to know too, is there was a guy on, actually, if you turn the clock back three weeks earlier to the Bundesliga, the dog that was third place in that Bundesliga was Fritz Bieler's dog from the year before. And you got to know Fritz Bieler, okay? They, Fritz is adamant, they robbed him, they cheated me, I should have won, this is the best dog. He's always like this, okay? Always like this. So, he gets all mad. He's got his new dog. He gives that dog to his friend, an old man like him. Mind you, these guys in the early 70s now. And this guy hasn't shown a dog for like 20 years. Fritz goes, no problem, I'll coach you up. They go to the Bundesliga and that guy gets third place. Just so Fritz loves to stick it in your ear. You know, he just loves to stick it in your fucking ear. Uh, uh, I mean, I got so But something great big about Fritz was, and, and you have to tell me more about it, like, like what I, and I never had the privilege to, to interact with him, but mm -hmm. he was very much like very structured. Like, it's like, no, this is, this is the time I feed my dog. No, this is the time, like, like there was a- Ivan, uh, Ivan, and, you go to his field. And dogs like that. Yes, yes, discipline. 
and dogs want the same and and nothing coming out of the blue at them you understand and just and they learn to trust you that way you're the pack leader you go to Beeler's field for instance and there would be all these chalk marks on the on the field like geometry shit no no it's you put the dumb this is for the dumbbells this is for the bungee this is this mark this is that mark tell you a story this is many years because later. it's all many, about creating very solid habit yes uh, before dog, you put it anywhere yeah. else yeah. If you if you don't train mistakes, the dog doesn't know he can make mistakes. You know, uh, years later, this is a story. Roland Seibel is another one who learned so much from Fritz Beeler. This is years, years later. We're at Fritz's place. This is when I had Rex, and he goes, uh, and we're talking, and, and I used to love to pry because I knew if I started prying him on questions, he just, he, you know, he'd start going. You know, so I'm starting to pry him questions about feeding. Okay, and then he goes, "Come with me," and we go downstairs to the basement. And Roland looks at me, goes, "Dean, he's never let me in the basement." And I'd already known him for 20 years; he'd never let me in the basement. Okay, we go in the basement. There's a kitchen, and he has a graph of what that dog is going to eat for the next 30 days. Exactly. Okay. Right. Then he has another graph about exercise. The dog's going to get this exercise and that exercise. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, well, I mean, said. when you think about the super athletes, human athletes, that's mm-hmm. what they do today. Yes, yes. That's and he would the get all, he would get his he would get his like his feeding shit from horse people in Germany. I mean, he was all about this. I mean, he was. Uh, every little thing, every little intricacy with the dog was so relevant to him. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I, I just, uh, I'm the only one who has lots of training video. I wish T was here with me now because he would enjoy this. So I'm gonna much. tell you a secret. Uh, and go ahead. Ev- Did you see the training else. videos? No, no, no. But you mentioned T and and. Yeah. One day I want you, T, and I live podcast. I didn't believe me. I had the same thought. I had the we, same thought. We fucking have, the have to do that. I have the same. You know, when you get T to get him to play his his drums, it's cool, man. He can play. Uh, but anyway, uh, another story. Uh, FCI championship, whatever year it was. Uh, I was on the FCI team with uh, with 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 uh, with with with, with uh, Rico, who I got from uh, Fritz, and I was also on the Shepherd team that year. And Fritz came out to the FCI because it was before the Sh- Shepherd Championship, and that was like a tune-up trial. So he came to watch me, and you know, watch and watch. So afterwards, I said to him, I said, "Man, Fritz, we would really like to come over and just meet you and stuff." And you got to know, Fritz, like, no, no, I cannot meet nobody. No, you come and we train. No one can come. No one can come. I said, Fritz, I just want to come and shake your hand. That's all. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. And you got to know Fritz, it. too. I love it. So I tell the team, we're going to go meet Fritz. And I said, now, listen, before we go in front of the hotel, I'm going to inspect all you dudes because you cannot have dirty clothes. You know, when you show Fritz a south of dirty clothes, you go home. Seriously. If you got dirt on your shoes, on your tracking boots, what's wrong with you? I mean, that's how he, you know, really, seriously. Sir, he changes his shirt every time after he does obedience. His wife brings him a new shirt, okay? Tell him the special fucking shoes for obedience, okay? This is a huge fucking deal. So anyway, before we go, I have to inspect everybody. I'm going to run out of battery here soon. But anyway, before we go, he inspects everybody. You better and, charge it. Yeah, I'm going to. You better I'm find plug it. it. Anyway, so I got to make sure everybody's, you know, clean and everything. So we go there, okay? And Fritz is there with his normal stern self. And, uh, but right away, the team captain gives him the flag. And that kind of breaks the ice. So then his wife, Ellie, brings out coffee and shit. And we're sitting around talking a little bit. So we start training dogs, you know. And uh, there was a sleeve in Germany. They don't use it so much anymore. It's called Ebinger. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about the sleeve, you can use right arm, left arm, switch back and forth. T had a dog named Ike. Okay, I remember there's a him. lot of great IT stories, tremendous IT stories. Uh, so uh, T brings out Ike and right away Fritz looks at the dog and goes Malamar, because you could see the dog had Malamar in him. He was from he was from he was from the Netherlands, you know mm. that registration. Mm. So you know what goes on there. Okay. So anyway, uh, long story short, Fritz gives 
MIT that origin Fritz invented that Ebinger sleeve years before, and he gave T the original prototype, and T still has it in his house. And anyway, that day, Fritz let us videotape training, and it's one of the few t places where there's real training with Fritz Beeler. You know, wow. there wasn't. A, it was just mostly like Rex some stuff with his own dog you know a little bit with t's dog uh real real quick story uh t was here he would like you know i was having big problems with rex with the sit in motion and the real problem was his anal glands were messed up when i found out when i went home starts foosing 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 foos pass he goes past me and t ivan he's so light on his feet you can't even hear him you know when he's walking past you and then he tells the dog sit and he does this move where he catches his chin with one hand and the other hand he pops his butt but it's not the slow i mean it happens so fast you know it's like wow and then he just kind of looks at us takes the dog away comes back okay does it without it the dog just nails it then he looks at me and goes what there we go <laughs> i mean i mean it's just uh no, I mean, uh, Fritz Bieler, again, another individual who it just, I'm so blessed that he opened up to me. I just can't say enough. You know, I just, he's a very difficult man. I'm, lots of times I'm glad I didn't speak German. Um, uh, he's, uh, his basic character, uh, I talk about character, is maybe as an individual, maybe I wouldn't like but he had something I wanted so bad. I wanted to know what he knew, you know. So Interesting. I had to, that's very, I had to, very, because that's very. Hard to me lots yeah. Of times. Believe me, if I don't like you, I, you know, I don't want, I can't be around you so much. But he had that that I needed. So anyway. That's a good point. How you put it, very, very nicely. You know what I was thinking, kind of to to sidetrack a little bit. But you know, early early on when we were talking about. Every sport, one, one, I think one thing that keeps a certain sport, being humans, what, horses, whatever, there is always appreciation, acknowledgement of history, mm -hmm. of Hall of Fame, of who is who. And our sport lacks this. We never think about maintaining history and maintaining like like even when you think about the name how many times we change the name of the sport right like you you by just by changing the name all the time you're you're destroying imagine imagine nike changing their name yeah 20 yeah. times right right it's right like we cannot maintain we cannot build like future is built by what we do at present times, which creates the past. But the past is important. And, and somehow the, the IGP community really has not found a way how to, how to excite people with the past. And that's what you're doing right now. Believe it or not, that's what is happening. I hope everybody that does IGP gets excited and makes it motivated mm -hmm. to go to want to you train. Know, uh, you know, Riser was just here last year, did a seminar, and I went, you know, I like Riser. He's a good man. He really tries really hard. Okay, He really does. He has very good intentions for all this crazy shit. And he talked about something that is maybe the truth. And Ivan, you're such a great example of this. We need to have superstars in our sport, okay? We need to have people who people can say, I can do that too, you know? But in the last couple of years, the judging has gotten a little bit too I think maybe the last year has gotten a little bit better, but for a while there, it got so extreme, you know, I mean, like, fuck, what is dog got shit gold, you know, and it's like, and like I was saying earlier, you, I look at these new handlers, are you going to go out there and just get your ass chewed up by these judges, you know, and I mean, we have to, and I'm not talking about giving away points, okay, it's very great 
that Mark make 97 points this weekend at the FCI. That's great for the new people in our sport to have that example of a, of a younger person who can do it too at a great level that you can, that there is success, that you're not just going to go there and get kicked in the teeth after you try so hard. You know, one thing, um, who was the judge that said that to me? Uh, Gunther Deagle. He said something to me once. He says, when you're judging, if the dog doesn't show pressure, you have to find something good to say. You have to, okay? You got to give people a cookie for if you want them to come back, you know? Um, 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 um. Again, you know, uh, I know our sport is, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm, but I'm probably going to drop power really soon. I just don't know how to charge this thing. But anyway, I know our sport is really difficult. It takes such a time commitment. But really, uh, you you got to really understand that what's really cool is it not just you. You're part of a force. You really are. And especially if you really do your research and you get a breed quality dog. Understand all that breed quality stuff, all that evaluation stuff, that's data. And data gives you information, gives you knowledge, okay? There's many German Shepherd dogs in Germany who've never pa who passed the breed survey who never get bred. Yes, the owner knows it's their responsibility to go to the breed survey to get the data, okay? Uh, and this is vital. Um, um, again, about our sport, I don't ever want to see – it's okay to have cash prizes and shit like this sometimes, but that never should be like the deal ever because then the dogs will suffer. They will suffer from the money. Just go to bird dogs. You'll see it, okay? Mm. But on, on the other hand, um, we need to really think about how we can promote what we do more. You know, we really need to – they need to talk to the, to the judges about – don't have a sharp pencil in a local trial. Think about what Sunday afternoon in Germany means. You don't pass shitters. You know, what's a really interesting point, and this would be such a point in discussion, is what's going to happen with no stick hits. This Oof. is a tough one. Oof. This is a really tough one. Especially, we're not so concerned with our working line German Shepherds because the breeding is so strong in there. But you get like your show line German Shepherds, yipes. It's borderline as it is now. Then what's going to happen? Your show line Rottweilers, those are the kind of dogs that bite people and turn on people. Then what's going to happen? They think they're making it better, but in fact, they're opening a door, they're opening a door for breeding of weak nerves. All right. I mean, it's really... Yipes! That more, you know, I don't like to be like old. Oh, the old days were the best, and all the shit. But man, that's kind of that scares me, and it's so hard to make the public understand that. Yeah, it's it changed. Big. It really to this year changed, changed the sport, changed the, changed the evaluation of dogs. It changed everything, not for good. You know, I asked Pierre, the great judge from Sweden at the WDC this year about that. And I said, well, do you think the helper should be stronger? Do you think like a lot of times in the old days, the helper would scream at the dog all the time? And he said, Dean, in Europe, people aren't going to handle that. They're not going to handle that screaming at the dog and all that stuff. It ain't going to go on. I don't know what to say. You know, uh, I don't know what to say. I it's think just... it was a matter of education. I, you know what is interesting with this? And I spend a lot of time about that topic. And I talked with, with quite a few people already. Nobody, like FCI, WSV, nobody was pressured by outside political forces to mm -hmm. remove the stickets. Mm -hmm. That came from within. This is the sad part, where we could have educated why we need it, why it's so important, and why it's not really hurting and cruel and, and all these what-ifs. Because in our sport, if the dog doesn't want to do it, the dog says, I'm not going to do it. And there is nothing you can do about it. You get another dog that likes to do that. It's, right. a, it's a big mystery why this happened, but it, it will change. I am absolutely sure that it, this 2023, you know, Ivan, it's right like away, changing right the away, game. You know, that makes you have suspicions about uh, show dog people. Mm. 
and what they want to do with their show dogs and the money. I mean, we're going to have golden retrievers getting 99 points in protection. Right. right. You know, it's just, uh, I know it's, it's, it's to me, that's, you know, it, that is something about this, you know, because really what our sport is such, it's the best definition of temperament there is for a working dog. Right. Okay. And to take that critical aspect of the test away, right. man, it's tough and it's that's tough. where you know like i i i mean knowing you over the years i know shutskun is your thing and i i've grown up like i again like i i did ring sport and i still do ring sport and i appreciate all the dog sports in certain level what i really like appreciated the most and the reason i was doing igpa or shutskun was because you evaluate character and now that change in 2023 that changed from today on the game is different uh, it is you know again you just it'll be see what happens down the road you know see how the judges look at the protection phase oh it's it's a tough one you know it's it everybody Everyone talks about this. Everybody yeah. who's been around for a long time discusses it. You know, uh, you know, if, if we want to play the game, we got to play by the rules they give us. We just can't make up our own rules. So, but, but it's not the same game. You've got a good point there. I, I know it's it's a tough one. You know, I I don't. I'm not one for uh, being again. There's nobody more. Uh, um, um, uh, radical than me, let's put it that way. But I'm not one for tearing down institutions. Okay, I'm not one. I'm for, I'm one for sure. This institution has brought us along this far. If you don't like what goes on in the institution, where well, you work to try to make it better. Mm. I'm not about starting new club. You know, club is only a bunch of. It's not a government. It's just a piece of paper with people saying we can do this. Okay, that's fine. But even still, there has to be a continuity in the institution you understand so like all these so so where do we go from here how do we evaluate character i don't you know as a helper I I, as a helper yeah. what do you do to show the character of a dog to a judge well i think it, first of all again you know since since right now you know the grip is the is the defining uh, is the manifestation, the physical manifestation of the temperament that you want in the projection phase, right. that full grip, okay? But with that being said, too, this is the difficult part, is the judge deciding are the, are the drives balanced between aggression and prey demonstrating through the barking? You understand, is the bark, dog, bark, gah, 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 really strong, okay? And that is so inanimate. That's just an opinion. Okay. Right. Uh, this is a very, this is a, well, yeah. And then again, you get those dogs, and this is, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, too. The dog, as long as he barks hardy in the blind, the rest of the outs, he stares. He's transfixed on the sure. man, never look away. Okay. Sure. But again, it's, it's, I mean, you're just, I don't, I don't know what to say, Ivan. I really don't know what yeah. to say. I, I just, I just hope that you judges, know, like, uh, what, like, um, Mike Tyson had one very cool say, and, and I, I will butcher it because I am so bad at remembering things, but there was something about like, you, you think you know who you are until you get punched in the face. <laughs> you, think, yeah. you think you have a plan until yeah. you get punched in the face. Right. And right. that goes right. the same. Like you think you, you have courage and everything until you get a stick hit. And when we're talking about stick it, <laughs> right? But when yes. we're talking about stick it, we're not talking about brutality. We're not talking about like, okay, you and I know how it was way back then with the reed stick. And when we had Bill Fields, which it was, <laughs> and, and he would go, we would do one of those like, go to your dog. Remember? Yeah, like, yeah sure, sure. And, and then the dog walks out with a kind of like a, a little bruise from the sticket. 
that was extreme. We don't need that. For sure we don't need that. But how do you test character if you don't twitch it? If you don't say, hey, what are you going to do now? I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't know what to say. You know, I don't know what to say. I, I, uh, I do know um, yeah. that we have to be careful with what the public sees what we do. Okay. Uh, but it's education. Yeah, but even still, you know, even still, it's, 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 you, we have, because it's hard for people to get past the aspect, why do you want it? Why do you enjoy dogs biting people? You know, why do you enjoy that? What, what is your right. kick in there? Why do you do that? Why do you do that? What's the deal? And well, then you because... do these other things, you know, it's, 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 it's again i think again our judges all i know is this the judges must watch the grip very strong they must watch if you want to give big points you better have some real good power when you hit you must demonstrate and this is another one of my hugest pet peeves arresting behavior the dog is an arrester it's not a punisher it's not to push in and thrash it's not the dog's decision to be a prosecutor. The dog's job is to arrest, clamp and hold, okay? And I'll say something else. When you stop breeding dogs who are clamping and holding, you are no longer going to have what you have in the German Shepherd, which is the best family farm dog in the world. You're going to get an aggressive idiot that only very few people want, okay? Right. And you can, but anyway, well, the judges, and again, you, then you got to watch your transitions about the barking. Oh, it's, I don't know what to say. I don't want to, I don't want to go renegade. I don't think that we should, there's enough of that stupid shit floating off in the world by yourself. No. One of the greatest joys of my life was success on the world level. And I still want to do that. I do not do have success in Topeka, Kansas. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's small potatoes. For sure. That's For sure. small potatoes. Okay. And anytime you start an offshoot club, you're just small potatoes. Even Riser and <laughs> his group it. is still small potatoes. Everybody knows that. Okay. You know, I mean, if you really has aspirations, swim with the big boys. But there is a possibility that things are really going that far to where there will be a need for something else to come up. Well, maybe, you know, I, I because see. you, you know, when you think about it, like, why do we, why, why do we need a dog with confidence and character and such stable dogs? Because they're working dogs, because they, they, they're your police dogs, they're your military right. dogs, they're, yes. they're the dogs that have to right. do, they right. really fucking have to do something. Right. And if they're all shaken, if they're all spooky and acting unpredictably, Yes. And, you know, Ivan, this is your point about education, okay? Right. If anybody who really knows, knows that any good um, dog that you use for any kind of service, its ancestors were IGP dogs. Some of the worst dogs I've ever seen have been in police dog kennel breeding programs in Germany and in America. Yeah. At military installations. Shit dogs that they don't even know they're shit. They just think this is cool. Okay, and I've seen it in Germany in police departments, and I've seen it in American Ameri in military installations, okay? And we all know, all of us know that the good dogs come from us, come from right. what we do, all right? But again, right. like we've been discussing, the stickets, yikes. Okay, I'm going to change the subject. Okay, good, but... Let's, let's have some fun. Good. How about, give me the Japan story. <laughs> okay, I can tell you about that one. Oh, That's yeah. a good story. It's That's a so story. fucking amazing <laughs> thing. Okay. In uh, 96 or 97, when we won the world championship in Finland, uh, they did a, a like a documentary about the, about the event, okay? And I got to be in the documentary, okay? I got 100 points in tracking, and plus I'm a weird-looking Indian guy from America, and we can get kind of weird. And plus there was a lot of shit going on at that trial, too. I mean, you, you want to talk about some cheating motherfuckers? <laughs> Tell you about that trial, okay? We had beat the, we were the first time the Germans had ever been beaten by a team was two years earlier in, in, in Austria, okay? So we come to, we, we come to, you know, to, to, to Finland, okay? And at the end of the trial, guess what? 
we win again. So what does Rudenauer do, the chief judge, German guy, goes, we're going to have do-overs. What are you talking about do-overs? When is there do-overs in Schutzen? He says, we're going to have do-overs. So we're going to have, and the tracking was really hard, like 30, 40 dogs flunk tracking was really hard because we're going to have do-overs in tracking. Yeah, right. So then what does he do? He picks like two German guys who had Vs in the stadium to do do-overs. But then he mm. picks Egon to do over, who got like 81, 82, he got 120, doesn't matter. Okay, so everybody's like, what the, what's this do over shit? The Norway, you gotta understand, the Finns don't like the Germans. That old stuff is still there, okay? So once that gets out, that these Germans are playing this games, man, the shit started happening in the stadium. They surround the German team. They start yelling at the German team. Egon walks to the German team. How can you dare cheat us like this? We are the winners. And I'll say this, Gunther, no, of course, like a henny. Now, if I could, there's a German guy. They said, listen, they're making us do this. They told us if we don't do this, they might kick us out of the club. So we're like, you fucking cheating motherfuckers. So the tracking judge then says, I ain't judging this. The trial's over. We're not going to have do-overs. So, and I'll say his name. I don't care. George Shoemaker's judge in protection. He goes, well, I'll judge tracking. What the fuck? So they take these guys out to track again. I talked to the track players later. They took them to the hardest field they could find. And when you're sitting there in the stadium, it's coming over, you know, 81, 71, fail. People start cheering. Oof. They start cheering, you know. We won that thing. So anyway, there was a documentary about that. I was in that. It was shown all over Europe, kind of like PBS. I remember being in an airport somewhere, and somebody come up to you, oh, I started on PBS. So anyway, a year goes by. I get an email. Uh, we would like to, you to come to Japan and do dogs. And that's all it says. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, I don't know what that means. So I said, listen, I'm, and I thought it was like doing a seminar or something, because I would, you know, it's on the team and all this shit. So I said, come do a, I'm doing a seminar in Los Angeles. Come to this thing. So the guy comes, Mr. Matsumoto comes to the seminar. Uh, that night, we go out to dinner. Very, this is fancy Japanese hotel in L.A. For any place. We go there. And like most Japanese businessmen, Matsumoto gets drunk as shit. <laughs> he is drunk as shit. So the next day he comes out to the seminar, and after the seminar, we go out to dinner, and he looks at me and goes, Mr. Calderon, did I sign anything last night? And I said, no. <laughs> he goes, did I promise you anything last night? And I said, no, not really. So he says, okay. So then he tells me what he wants me to do. Wants me, they make this big dog park, amusement park in Japan, like Disneyland, but just for animals. And it's, I mean, the place was amazing. He says he wants me to come for two weeks, bring my national champion, and show what I do. So I thought, okay, I can, you know, how much are you going to pay me? You know, that's the bottom line. So he goes, I'll pay you this much money. So, okay, I can do this. So I got Todd West. To, and and there's, another, there's so many stories about oh, yeah. this. Okay. And I got Gary Park to go over to help me. Oh, and did he first, come with you? I did, a low, I did a low Gary went with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a story about that, too. Anyway, so, and at first I thought this was Japanese guys wanted to train dogs, but I had no idea what this shit was. Okay. <laughs> so then as a few emails go on and on and on, and also I like the rumors. Once the rumors got out that me and see, because the world championship was going to be in Boston that year, first time ever. And Todd was going to be one of the helpers. And Todd worked with me. And there's all this controversy, too. So what? He works with me. He was a great helper. And then I'm taken to Japan. And the word is Dean's going to Japan with Todd to train the Japanese team. No, we get there. And now I'm already starting to realize that ain't the deal. I'm going to this amusement park. So when I get there, I'm like, whoa, man. The place is way up. Japan is a very mountainous country. It's, a, it's not anything like you think. It's mountains everywhere. The place is outside of Tokyo, way up in the mountains. Beautiful place. Beautiful. It's like Disneyland. I mean, they've just spent millions and millions of dollars of building this facility. There was a TV personality in Japan. Uh, he would go all over the world and do things with animals. And he was like part of theme guy at this park. Okay. So I get there, and I was just supposed to be there for two weeks, like heel, sit down, come biting, talk a little bit about German shepherds. I get there, and what they've done, they've invited like different world, different champions in different animal sports from all over the world. They invited the sheep herding champions from New Zealand, 
They invited the Frisbee champions from America with their dog. They invited the falcon champions, you know, birds, owls, falcons, eagles from England. And okay. that's all Japanese culture. They love to the the shows of oh, all it's sorts. Everything, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. So, Ivan, I, you know, so before I get there, they write me like, what do you need? So I said, well, you know, I need like a field, like I have like a world champ. So I get there, Ivan, they built me a stadium, like a world fucking champion stadium, you know? So I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool, okay? So I get there and, oh, there's so many stories. I get there and it's what happens, it rains every day, like at two o'clock and the stadium is just a mud pit. You can't do anything. Mm. So then, they build me like this 15,000 seat indoor stadium. Okay. So I'm there for two weeks. One of the things that happened is they bought all these dogs from all over the world, like Noah's Ark. Okay. And they had them all loose in this area. And Japanese people just like to look at them. Japan's a different spot, man. Yes. So I'm there one day and I watch one of the Dogmans go through a fence and just chew on this lady. So one thing leads to another. Uh, Dean, can you train these dogs? And I took one of the big problems, dog trained them up. After that, after that two weeks, I was supposed to go to the World Championship in Boston. And they said, Dean, can you stay longer? And I said, well, how much money you got? And they said, we got this much money. I said, okay, I can stay that long. Okay. So I stayed. And one of the things I did, I trained a bunch of their dogs, went to the World Championship, didn't do so good because I had to train my dog. Poor it was Panther, my national. I had worked that dog 60 Panther. straight days in Japan. Oh, and I flew all the way to Boston and got him out of the car, out of the plane, and the dog was toast. He was absolute toast. That was my fault. But anyway, and then when I got back to Japan, they said, you got any other ideas about shows? And I said, yeah, I got a lot of ideas. We had dachshund racing, not like you see here. This dachshund racing. I knew in Germany they had working dachshund and show dachshunds. So I went and got working dachshunds. And these little fiends, they got dry for what they do, <laughs> like our dogs have. You know what I'm saying? Like go to ground and find rats and shit. They're crazy. So I got those dachshunds, okay? And at first I thought, okay, I'm going to have like a race car, like a rabbit, and they're going to chase it. I couldn't find a miniature race car big enough. So I made some adjustments, and then I got there. In the indoor stadium, they built me a race course for the dachshunds. And it, dachshund race, I mean, all my shows, we had three times a day, we did German Shepherd show. Part of the uh, German Shepherd show was Gibby, my Jack Russell. And the Gibby Jack Russell, on, man, yeah. he was a superstar. Yeah, Gibby He's went on to have his own show in Japan. Uh, they had the Gibby show. The Gibby show was cool. He had his own little stadium, too. If I would do like I would go from one show an hour break to another show. Anyway, before the Gibby show, the second year, the girl, teenage girls would be out there with their Gibby son, Gibby son. They'd be chanting Gibby son, Gibby son, Gibby son. Because <laughs> if they say son, like your name and son, that means they like you in Japan. Mm. So Gibby and then Gibby, he would do rock and roll video. And those were the days of the Spice Girls. OK, so Gibby did one rock and roll video. Then after that, I mean, Gibby, what did we do? 10, 12, 15 rock and roll videos. OK. So then, he had um, to learn how to sign autographs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, uh, Ivan, selling t Okay, so then I had this idea the second year. I want to sell T-shirts here. And I said, okay. And the boss, they said, okay, Dean, you can do this. So I have my, like, after the show, got my little T-shirt stand there. And nobody wants to buy my T-shirts. I'm like, what the hell? And then I had the greatest translator. There. I had a full-time translator. Her name was Saore, which means the beautiful flower in Jap Japanese. That's her name, Saore. So she says, Dean, you need to autograph those T-shirts, American champion. So I said, okay, man, Ivan, I would come back to my room and I'd have a pile of money, like piles of money. And I'd throw it up in the air and I'd like wiggle all around. All, like I'd make like $10,000 a week selling T-shirts, okay? So I had all this money. And I'm going, what the hell am I going to do with all this money? I can't put it in my suitcase. What am I going to do with all this money? I mean, like I had stacks of the Jap it was Japanese money. It's like huge, you know, like huge money. So I, I go to the, 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 the tre I go to my boss, Mr. Matsumoto, and I told him, he goes, don't problem, talk to the treasurer, Mr. Kanasugi, this is his name. I said, Mr. Kanasugi, my teacher sales have this money, yada, yada. He goes, no problem. Comes back. He has this uh, Switzerland bank statement. And I, in Japan, I could work for three weeks, had to leave for, for 72 hours to my work permit. My left cycle, I threw to Switzerland, opened up a bank account. At the end of the week, I give Kanasugi all the cash. He counted up. He sent it to Switzerland. I'd get a receipt. 
And then after three years in Japan, not a lot of money in Switzerland. <laughs> but anyway, Japan, uh, uh, no, it was really great. Uh, we had the German Shepherd Show, uh, and we would vary that all every year, different types like box searches. Uh, we, we did, uh, uh, with the dogs already there, I trained uh, drill team obedience, fly ball, uh, dachshund racing, Gibby show was really big. Um, uh, no, it was a great gig. I mean, uh, I really loved entertaining the people, the joy on the people's faces. Because after the show, you could come down like pet all the shepherds, and they're good dogs, you know. I didn't bring no idiots there. And then at the third year there, after the second year, I went and got a uh, Rex from Fritz and I came back and I won the qualifier, but I couldn't go. I had to go back to work. Mm. And then uh, interesting story. I asked Haro Masuda, who was a great man. He's a Japanese man, German Shepherd guy who won the world championship, won the FCI world championship. Great judge needs to come here more. I asked Haro. Haro would come up to my place. We had a beautiful place up in the mountains. It was, like where they lived, it's all hot and humid and fucked up. We, it was like Switzerland where we lived, man. Plus I had indoor training, air conditioning, you know, track and everything. They come Damn. up to me. So I said, Harold, I want to go off to the Japanese team. And he goes, Dean, your grandchildren, kids could be here. You can't go on the Japanese team. And I said, why? He goes, because you're not Japanese. And that you need to explore that part about the Japanese culture. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, mm -hmm. the younger people finally are changing, but they have severe racism to all other great Asian cultures. Okay, yeah, yeah for it's instance, very strong tradition. Yes, yeah, yeah, they yeah. call all foreigners gaijins, okay? So at the park, we'd have maybe 15,000 people a day, all Japanese. But every once in a while, I hear, blah, 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 gaijin, blah, 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 gaijin. And they're telling you that maybe down by the horse area, <laughs> there's three or four gaijins, okay? We would go out to dinner. I'd take me and Todd and other people who worked for me later. We'd go sit like at the sushi restaurant. Nobody would sit next to us because we were gaijin. Okay, we would go sit on the. Well, this we're on the train one time. We're sitting talking, talking, talking. Blind this friend guy brings in his blind friend, sits him down. You know, guy has a cane. We start speaking English. Guy gets up and goes to the other part of the train. <laughs> they just, you got to understand this. You know, they just. Yeah, I they, mean, they, they do not, and they're so closed, man. There's there's so much about the Japanese culture that, again, for me, I couldn't stand the way they treated women. It's disgusting. Mm. It's really every train station you get off in Japan at nighttime. All the Japanese kids they wear uniforms. Every kid wears a uniform, and there's all these Japanese schoolgirls running around, but they're dressed kind of slutty. They're prostitutes, but this dressing is what appeals to guys. Right. I mean, there's really a lot about the culture. The executives in my company, okay. On Friday night, they would go to Tokyo to the called the Ginza District, okay, where all the bars are, and they would go there. I mean, the whole culture there, the company man, the company pays for everything, and they would get drunk as snot. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's the Japan culture. There is this one side of it that it's so yes. much about entertainment and like just going, going. In a rabbit you know, and people you think know? consumerism is bad here in Japan. My God, it's like buy, buy, buy more, buy more, buy, and they'll waste money. They don't care. At that How park, was it I with? Think, like, I'm curious, and I know we we're talking dogs, but like, what did you guys eat? What did you like as far as okay, like like well, the places yeah. to go to have yeah. good times? Well, what, what, and yeah, what happened in Japan? A lot of companies will have apartment buildings for their employees, okay? Like a lot of sports teams, like professional sports teams, you live at the complex. You don't have like your own home, okay? And this place was way up in the mountains, so they had apartment buildings for the employees, okay? And in the apartment building, you have a 24-hour cafeteria, okay? In the park itself, they had Italian restaurant, French restaurant, it was a big place. Also more than that, I had what was called, my company was Mauro Benai. Mauro Benai, there's three large, seven large corporations that run Japan, okay? Mm. If you ain't in one of those corporations, you ain't ever gonna get shit. If you don't get employed in one of those corporations, you ain't shit. I had a Mauro Benai card. I can show that card anywhere in Japan and do anything I want, anything. I show my Mauro Benai card. I can go anywhere on the train. I can go anywhere I wanna eat. 
I just can't go to the girly clubs in Geisha District because I'm not Japanese. But anyway, about eating, I didn't, uh, we would just go to town. It was rough because, I mean, you know, it was, I'm not, uh, real crook story. Uh, we're there. This is the first time we're there. My girlfriend, Rosie, we're eating these salads. The restaurant, I really like them. We got going every night eating these salads. All of a sudden, Rosie starts screaming. I said, what? What? Rosie, what? that's right. And what it is, they put minnows, like these little minnows in the salad. But a couple of them were still wiggling. <laughs> okay. Oh, like, yeah. Nah, I can't do that one. Uh, another <laughs> another time, okay, at the, at, you know, at the, but at, the, for, yeah. at the park, they have, you know, 24-hour, you know, uh, our cafeteria there. And I never ate. There were one night I had to eat there. I was in a rush. So I go down there, and I and the cook was so happy because I'm getting his food. You know what I'm saying? I put a fish on my plate and all this stuff. I go back to my room to eat it. They haven't gutted the fish, okay? Oops. They haven't take the guts out. And, I mean, you can't eat it, okay? So I'm like, shit, okay? I can't take it down and throw it away because then the – I knew enough because then the cook is going to lose it's faith. It's disrespectful. And he's, yeah, and he's fucked, and, and, and I can't do that. So I said, okay, I'm going to flush mm. it down the toilet. Well, I clogged up the fucking toilet. <laughs> anyway, that's okay. That's, that's okay. But no, no, uh -huh. Japan is a different place. Um, um, uh, I really enjoyed uh, entertaining the people. It was really fun. It was really fun. The children and stuff. It was really fun. Yeah, that's the, the thing. Like, I, I think Japan, as much as I know, and what do I know, but there are people that also they like entertainment in a different level in my yeah. opinion you know they're also really if you're like with me they can work if, hard they can do whatever but then they they want to check they, out and, and they, they love americans okay like you'll see american actors like brad pitt does commercials there that you'll never see here okay mm, right they do they do publicity things all the time there that you'll never see here i mean uh, I was always advertised as American champion, and that was like a big deal. Okay, I went down to the the, the Tokyo Giants, their best baseball team, and gave demonstrations before the baseball game there. That was a big deal, simply because they had another guy at the same time who was American champion golf balls, and he mm -hmm. hit golf balls outside the stadium. So that was, they love that kind of stuff. They love pizzazz. Oh my God! You go into department stores in Japan, you get headaches from the noise and da 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 da. Uh, what's difficult about the Japanese? What I found though is, is they're they're quiet people, they're closed. Uh, it's difficult for they don't open up very much. It's very hard in business with them. They they it's very difficult for them to come to agreement on things. Uh, tremendous waste. Um, um, mm -hmm. I used to have to, for instance, I used to. Moro Ben, a huge corporation. I had to go to these managers' meetings. What? I'm a dog trainer. What am I going to do? But you're a dog manager. So I'd go to these dog manager meetings, these manager meetings. They had the <laughs> head of, of GE come over, a famous guy from out from America, and he just tongue lashed them all. I said, man, you guys, the way you run your businesses, you go into your Japanese offices, you see stacks and stacks of papers. You come back and look at that same desk, it's the same paper stacked up there. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, whatever. That's amazing. Stuff. Yeah, it's it's you know they have real good dog sport there. They have really good interest. They have excellent dog sport. Hara Masuda. Uh, we talked about Ori earlier. Yes. Hara eventually bought Ori from uh, Rajay. Went on to win the and WSV exactly. and the FCI with Ori. Uh, Ori went on in Japan to be an outstanding producer. I saw many Ori sons in Japan. It takes two to tango, and the mother wasn't so much a nothing, yet the dog itself was outstanding. Ori could produce a better dog than himself. A perfect example of that was that dog, Query, that he has made, and his brother, that Query Antwerpa. In my opinion, probably one of the best, if not the best, in all aspects. I like a physically attractive dog, too. It was one of the nicest dogs I ever saw. He was also, he wasn't in, he was first sold to Japan, then on to Taiwan, but another one, just marvelous. Man, what a cool times. I'm going to switch it off again. We are in Italy. You're my team, <laughs> you're my yeah. team captain. I'm about to go and do protection with Kenny. I'm, 
like, oh, maybe we should do protection, maybe we shouldn't do training. And there is then, yeah, let's do protection. Mark put the sleeve on. Mark put the sleeve on. And I'm thinking, we just make a, just a quick in and out, just to warm up. Mark gives him a bite. I make an out. My dog's not doubting. <laughs> Do you remember this? Yeah, I remember. That was uh, the day before I had to show up. Yeah, I remember. And I was fucking shocked. I'm like, what is going on? And then Mark is like, he felt bad because he's thinking, am I doing something wrong? Like, I'm going to ruin the, the, the fucking thing. But then you and I get on the podium and it's a moment that I cannot forget. We won the world championship and you were next to me drinking champagne. <laughs> Dude. Uh, 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 you know, Ivan, uh, actually, do you remember that we went over to that Italian club to work your dog? Remember that? And the guy had that real dry Italian wine, and we had to drink that stuff all the time, remember? <laughs> and Ivan, really, I do remember, bless your heart, you were so nervous. Bless your heart, man. Fuck. You were just like, that fucking dog ain't gonna out. I know he's gonna out. I know he ain't gonna out. You have to mark, you're like, Mark, you gotta help me. He don't wanna let go. He don't wanna let go. I remember. That was a good one. Oh, he had, one. he had this thing about, like, this feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been in more than that too. Both you and Dave Courier, your dogs track great. They gave you some hard fucking tracking, man. That was tough. No, you guys tracked really. Re I was very impressed, man. That it was, was about tough. tracking. It really yeah. was about tracking. Yes, yeah, right, right. I know what you're saying. And no, especially, no, no. especially coming out from you because you are one of the few people, and this is not, this is sincere. Like, you know tracking. Well, and when... I... So there is T. There is, you know, there, there are people in the country mm -hmm. and have different ideas about right. how it should be done. You, <laughs> talk to I me mean, about your tracking a little bit because it's, okay. it, it really you know, is. Yeah. You know, with really, with tracking, there's, there's two things. There's two ways. Okay, first, now I'll be real frank. I did learn the correct way to put pressure on the dog to make him track where you, what I say you must track, not because you want to, but you must, okay? I learned that from Reinhard Lentner, okay? Mm. And I'm going to interject something now. Don't you talk to me about that person in America who everything's is so fucking great. When he won that FA championship, I laid that track. So don't talk to me about that shit, okay? But Reinhard Lentner, because he had compassion, he knew how to use pressure with compassion okay with that being said though to me it was just very for instance nowadays the local the big hero and i'm glad is lars lentz and he says lots of good things okay but everybody's like you know what lars says you make these deep footprints and you put the food down there well dude we were doing that 40 years ago that ain't new okay um another thing that renhart taught me excuse me the fritz taught me more once you, the dog, you first of all, this is an old German saying, a great tracking dog is a reflection of the work ethic of the handler. It's the right. slowest learning curve. You can take a dog and in like three weeks or so, four weeks, he's gonna heal as good as he's gonna heal the rest of his life. It ain't that way in tracking. It's, it's work. The dog, a lot of it is you allowing the dog to train, it's to learn, to train itself. Once a dog gets to a place, and I could talk about that word, can track, the ability to create problems that the dog can solve, this, this maybe is an art form. I believe this about art. I don't believe a monkey with a watercolor is art. I believe someone like Michelangelo, who studied ge geometry and, and, and sculpture, and got that piece of marble and then make that beautiful statue of David. It wasn't random shit, you understand? And it's the same thing with anything, like with tracking. You have your experience, you have your craft, but then you use that technique to turn it into an art. But then later on, I think a lot of people, they don't use the ball enough to reward the dog in the track. 
they don't make problem solving with the dog where the dog can problem solve. They're too afraid also to, guess what? Sometimes you make 85, but if you still got good, you know, 94 obedience, 96 protection, you're going to, you're going to, you got a chance. Okay. Right. You know, T says this, when they give you those V tracks, you get V. Okay. But you got to pass the hard ones too. And a lot of people simply don't go on track the dog in a hard field. There's, I see this, I go tracking with people all the time. The minute the dog makes a mistake, they correct it. The dog has no faith in itself to work out a problem. None whatsoever none whatsoever okay the dog has to trust you and have faith in you okay um to uh, have the um, freedom to resolve a problem when the yes, problem comes yes he's not gonna he's not gonna pencil every track okay you're gonna have bad luck sometimes your, your track is the hard one of the day it's the way it is but man people need to get out there and uh again work those hard tracks too dude uh, i no, i love uh, talking to you go on no you know it, and again i'm very happy that large lens is out there teaching people but he's teaching people a lot of times in dogs what i see things to me are very basic that people don't even know the basics you understand and without those basics they're making jumps ahead and consequently they have huge gaps it might look fantastic within that context but when problems arise dog doesn't understand all of a sudden it falls apart start don't lay straight lines all the time. Bend and those tracking, tracks. Sorry to interrupt you, but I, I, I just it just came to me from what you're saying, and I'm sure you will go over this, but tracking is the phase about problem solving. Yes. Teaching yes. your dog how to fucking problem solve. Nobody right. cares about the 100 points on a moonwalk right. field. Right, right. Right. And again, this is, and again, so many people, you know, uh, I'm happy that Lars, I assume, I know this, that bend the tracks, start off with a circle, get the pace quieter in the dog, in other words, slower, okay? Uh, uh, really good impressions in the ground, okay? Don't, you know, you got to track where you live, but understand if you're in California and you're always tracking that visual dirt, it's a right. game. Right. That's a fool's game, guys. That's a fool's game, okay? When I lived in California, always before the world, if I could get my dog tra tracking perfect on a lawn, cut grass, can't see shit, I knew he was ready to rock, okay? And I still hold those principles, okay? But also in the beginning, I have to say something. Uh, you have to have excellent tracking so the dog can have, again, success, success, success. If you're tracking like you live in wherever it might be, and the tracking is just so hard. You, the dog will track, but I don't think you're going to get the type of behavior that we want. Okay, the style. you can train your dog to bite the sleeve, and it'll. That's no big deal. But it's need. You need a helper who understands some things to get the behaviors that we want in gripping. And then that's one of the reasons why I live in Ohio. But really, I'm. I've been that way for a long time. I live where it's best for my dogs. Okay, in Ohio, it's like. It lacks a little bit in the dirt tracking. We don't have we don't have the bugs here. We have the the climate is vital. The dogs must have winter time. The German Shepherd dog. We don't have the bugs here. We don't have the humidity on my farm here. Ivan, I got I can got outside my door. I got ten acres, and the dirt here is so down south. You got that clay soil, and that's shit don't grow. That's why they grew what they did back in the day, because they couldn't grow anything else, okay? Here, the soil is so rich, and the grass just gets so thick. What I'm saying is I'm giving my dog an opportunity in the beginning to have tremendous success. And then later, because he's on great conditions, his mistakes warrant corrections. You understand? Right, right, yeah? right, right. right. We, can, we, we can talk a little bit now about go about the, where the dog must go. I went recently to a seminar and I'm very happy they had it. It was a Doberman seminar and they brought a very experienced Doberman trainer from Europe. And it was really good because he said some very basic things that people need to know, okay? Very basic things. And especially in the Doberman world, best those people's hearts, I mean, come on. Okay, this is something so many years ago we learned, this basic thing. You have your good puppy, throw the toy out in front in the bushes, in the weeds, you can't see it. And when you say get it, you pop that leash forward. 
He grabs that thing, you praise him. Pretty soon that sensation of that forward is no longer negative. It's now positive, dudes. And then later on when you go popping forward, that means go. It's so simple if you just do that before. And this is something that's, I mean, come on. Don't you people know how to use toilet paper no more? It's, you know, I mean, come on. I don't see people, they don't even know to do that. And this this European guy was showing people that in the context of teaching a puppy, you know, you bite the, the thing and then you hold it. It's what like, what, you what I that. would call it the top of the, on the shoulder. Yeah, you know, you can use that same thing right there, you know. But that simple thing, people are like, wow, wow. But again, and later on, okay, you can use that same principle with the ball, okay? Uh, one of anybody, anybody, anybody in this nation. And by the way, guys, like, I, I'm going to ask him in a second about tracking, but I mean, he, he okay. knows his thing. You know, Again, like I always say, the proofs and the points. The only one to make 99 points of the WC was T. Floyd, okay? If, I'm telling you, if somebody would spend two or three days with T doing tracking, you could learn so much. You could learn so much, okay? I mean, truly, truly, you could learn so much about what he knows, okay? And the proofs and the points, okay? okay. The you proof is in else? the points. This is, this is Dean Calderon's <laughs> all time so important it really like stop bullshitting stop showing me what you do in training the proof is in the points right you know I, and i understand you know man i know a really great trainer in europe i'm not gonna say his name. he can't show dogs he just gets too nervous bless his heart that's fine but also if you want to promote your opinions you better have some points that's all i gotta say you know you see it all over facebook I'm happy for you, I'm happy for you, I'm happy for you. But, you know, put the sleeve on your hero. Good for you. Where's your points? That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Dean, what's your favorite face? I know that's a, that's a very common question, but yeah. What is your favorite face in well, Schutz? Well, I still, I love to what go you tracking. Think? You know, I love to go out in the nature. Tracking, I mean, there's been instances in tracking where the dog amazes me. It's like, how the shit do you do? I could bite that sleeve. If I could get that dumbbell, I can't track you down. It's right. really cool. It amazes me. And I still love, because I'm still physically able to do this, I love the beginning protection work with young, good young dogs, you know, teaching barking and gripping and these things. I really like that a lot. When they so, when they don't know who they are, but they are right. actually somebody, right. right? It's really, and to me, you know, it's really easy to do, you know, and, uh, but it's, and, and also being, there's some things I'm very adamant about. You're not going to change me, okay? And some of the beginning stuff and protection work, um, you're not going to change me. Um, um, uh, and I still find that very much fun. And it, it just, um, let me say something right now, which is very important to me. My new obedience coach, to watch this woman train dogs, this man, it just makes joy in my soul, okay? How she can, can what's the biggest problem we have in obedience? Maintaining drive state. The dog, you know, he looks all pumped up for a minute or two, then all of a sudden, come, come time, second dumbbell, third dumbbell, he's a turkey, okay? Your finishers are slowing down, everything's like, yeah. How do you maintain that drive state, okay? Man, to watch her train, it's an amazing thing. And What and is her background? Is it Schutzhund or some? No, she's just a pet trainer. Ivan, okay, and I'm, okay. And I'm, I'm not going to say her name right no, now. No, no, that's cool. I'm trying to get, she's, <laughs> she won't. Just to get her, Mark was doing a little seminar in Pittsburgh a few weeks ago, and get her to go to that thing was hard for her, because she's hard for her to get out in front of people, you understand? Mm -hmm. but, but Ivan, I'm telling you, this girl's talent. Talent. And, and, it's, and, it's, and if you watch her, and, and then you, she's got this year old Malamar, I ain't gonna brag, but you, if I, you just wait, you just wait till you see this year old Malamar this girl's got. Holy Toledo! Go on my Facebook page and watch some of the controls she demonstrates. Not only can she put the dog in this tremendous drive state in obedience that it knows nothing else, okay, but 
you can see how we all know that the reward of gripping and protection is great to the dog it rewards behavior they love this shit okay but what happens it haunts all of us controlling that mad animal and protection okay you watch her go on my facebook page watch her german shepherd dog watch the control she has by using the grip rewards that she uses because they have almost as equal value to the dog as biting the helper you understand you understand uh-huh. I, I i took a dog a few years ago they couldn't train him in holland big mean motherfucker and i just brought out the ball and every time he did something right in protection i gave him the ball and then pretty soon i offered the lady twenty five thousand dollars. she wouldn't sell him but it's 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 even a better level than this that's all i got to say uh i like it so much that's so um, cool to to get excited oh, where where you're oh, at oh, like uh, oh. we always look for this moment yes in I mean, time. I, i'm so it makes me feel good that you can see that because believe me i'm just i'm like busting my buttons man and what's cool too now i mean it, it's really i like so much about it i i i i, I like I just I like I like the way she's training the way the drive state is maintained in the dog the the intellectual approach to it it expands the dog's tr- brain tremendously where every word you say to that dog really means something it really means something then after that it's your control and protection is not going to be such a deal It's not right. going to be such a problem. It's not going to it's not always with the collar and first. You know how many times five year old dog? Let's shock him again. He won't foos. Shock him again. He still won't run, run the blinds. Well, let's shock him again. And I every know. training session is just a fucking mess. I know. No. 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 I'm just That's I'm where getting, I I I I I walk away. Yeah. You know, a lot of people again they they jump ahead too soon. You know, they jump it. You know, there has to be I, I saw a little bit on your Facebook about something you wanted to talk to somebody, ask somebody what it was about. And they said, this fellow doesn't think you should correct dogs or something. And everybody knows that's kind of stupid, you know, that's just like stupid, you know. And especially in what we do, because first of all, I mean, the dog has no right from wrong, but there's a whole premise before. But this whole, does the pack leader never correct the dog? I mean, come on, physically, come on. Of course he does. Of course he does. And this gives him respect. The dog is a physical creature. He must physically respect you. Okay? He must physically res- his pack drive and your tough dogs or it's going to always make him challenge. Challenge. I got pack drive. I want to be back leader. I want to be back leader. And sometimes you got to know you can't push those buttons, but on the other hand, that dog if you want to talk primitive, you can say the dog's afraid of me. I don't talk about that. My dog respects me because I'm the pack leader. Must That's be. where the art comes. That's where the, like, like somebody that doesn't have the heart to love dogs can go off the rail very quick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, the thing is, too, about, again, about, you know, corrections is technique. Okay. And you have to see it being done. You have to see when it's being done. It really helps to have someone explain to you when it's done. You know, I've seen tremendous obedience uh, demonstrated where the trainer has used, like, no so-called modern techniques, you know what I'm saying, and just used a lot of pressure, and the dog works really well. But, you know, Ivan, when I train dogs, uh, really, it's not about the trophies and all that shit. It's about me and my dog having fun, even back right. in the day. That's why I didn't like a lot of those Germans, because that to me wasn't fun. That's not fun, okay? That's not fun. I want my dog to enjoy itself. I put him in the car. I made him go there, you know? Come on, you know? Yeah, no, no, you know, really. No. Yeah, no, no, you're so right. Like the whole, the, the, the beauty, I think, of, of doing things with a dog is to do something together and to allow the dog to flourish. Yes. And guide yes. them. And this yes. is where the yeah. corrections come. It's not to, to go in a war and abuse and whatever. It's to say, dude, that's the wrong way. Come here. Right. Right. You, the, the, the problem is too, is again, people, they don't, they don't understand the, because they can't read dogs well. They don't understand the level of correction necessary. Sometimes it's just a verbal no. Okay, 
Sometimes it might be a kick in the ass. I don't know. Um, bad choice recently. A woman came to me in tracking, and they used the collar on down in the articles. So why did the dog want to track no more? Well, what are you doing shocking them with the article? You know, on the down, it's not that hard. There's other ways to make them lay down. Okay, but you know, in in reality, we must always with the new people, you know, tell them that this is part of it, you know, that if you don't want to be involved in this, I don't see a path where you can get away from no corrections. I just no. I don't see that, you know. And I've had a lot of... I mean, you know, trial talk- and error. That's, you know, like... Yeah. You I, I want to somebody about- to tell me that I'm on the wrong path. I, yes. I Please tell me I'm on the wrong path because I don't want to be there. You know, you talked about the old days in California. I used to have a training, big training group at the at the Naval uh, Hospital in Oakland. Huge group, okay? I used and to go it, there sometimes. Yeah. Remember the lights? Great baseball field. Yes. Great place. Anyway, so... We uh, would train the, all night there. Yeah, it was a great place. Anyway, one of the women in the group was from Berkeley, you know, Berkeley hippie, all that shit. She brought two council people from Berkeley to watch. These people were polite, but they had a shit fit. They had a shit fit about the corrections and biting and the whole thing. To them, it was just like, what are you, why are you, you know, they just, they just couldn't What get the it. fuck is going on? Yes. And, and, and like, okay, for me, I don't like to train in, you know, now I don't ever train in front of people in the park, maybe just fucking around obedience or something. But I'm, I used to have a really nice training field in, the, in my little town here at the park. I didn't like it so much because there was people there all the time, you know. Now I have a training field in my little village. There's nobody there. Nobody can see. Good job. You know, good place. So back to the question, because right now we went through all three phases and they're all important. But if you, if you really have to pick one, which one is your your where your heart is well i mean you know protection is easy really it's that's right. no mis- you know that's not such a big deal i mean right. i wish I, i'll answer it this way okay uh, i wish i was a better obedience trainer okay i wish my dogs i wish i could make my dogs understand sooner and better what i want them to do okay um um um, um uh, tracking t- to me no mo- lo- no longer is like a like a lot, a lot of people tracking is a mystery. It's right. like whoa, what is this weird shit? You know, <laughs> to me, uh, to, to me, I'm pretty confident about what I want to do and when I want to do it. You know, and it's very, uh, uh, it really, um, believe me, this is uh, takes me it takes me to like Reiser says, tracking is my religion. And it's kind of like that, you know. It's a really, it's a feeling of, of peacefulness, of, of feeling the dog. Um, and and um, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I, I like being. And again, I just don't go tracking in the morning. That's another thing people don't do. Do right. wrong. I mean, I'll go out when it's 100 degrees. Maybe I don't make a huge track, but you're going to track. I don't care if it's 100 degrees. You're going to track. Um, uh, you know. I mean, I've been. I love I love to see really good Dumbo work. I mean, really correct Dumbo. You never see it. I know. You never see I anybody know. make three V-rated Dumbos. You don't. It's hard. It's the hardest training to do. It's hard. And especially if you want me to tell you what's V, not whoever, okay? Dog can't touch you with it. Um, I mean, first of all, no part of that dog's body can go past that Dumbo. Once that dog touches that Dumbo, he can never chew it. It can never be chewed, okay? When you come front, he can't. And then after that, all the way you work it, you know, no chewing, no touching. I mean, all that shit. And I the love, presentation. Yes, and the yes. letting go and, and yes. fucking. All, you know, and that you rarely ever see it done right, you know, where the handler presents it right okay and then you and then you get away in the to me this is we talk about the stick hits okay which is not even close to what i'm going to discuss is about taking that way is about being a negative but the negative of judges allowing dogs touching you with the dumbbell right. demand better training De- you know why our dogs have got and this is in this is this is Dean telling you the fucking truth, okay? You know why our dogs got better? I'll tell you something right now. Just look at the points. 
early 90s, the German national championship, over half the dogs make V in protection. And you're watching this shit, and you're like, what the fuck? You watch the world champs, all these dogs, half grips, all this shit making V in protection. What is all this stuff, okay? Then they voted in Jürgen Ritzi as chief, as, no, they voted in Hans Rudnauer as chief judge Rudenauer. in Germany. Everybody freaked out. Hans Rudnauer, he's like a Nazi. I can tell you good Hans Rudnauer stories too, good ones. So anyway, so what does he do? He has Ritzy judge protection at the Bundesliga. That your Ritzy judges, no dog makes V in protection. One dog makes SG, makes the highest was 95 points of bitch in protection. Great story about that. A few years later, at the world champion, especially Doug Deacon, Pierre, on the direction of, of Rudnauer and some other key judges, the grips have to be like it says. The dog must arrest because Roger went out and demonstrated like it's supposed to be in 91. And then Rudnar said, this is the way it's supposed to be. And what I'm trying to say is their great interpretation of the, the correct interpretation of what the, what, the, of what the rules are is why we have the quality and the protection work we have now. Okay, right. and I went up to Doug Deacon and Pierre 20 years ago, knocked on their table and said, thank you for your correct evaluations of protection phase. Because the protection phase, we discussed it, is a manifestation of temperament. It's right there in front of you. Man, I tell you, like some of the, and just like you, I mean, I've done it for so long. I've had 98 under Rudenauer, I've had 93 with on obedience with Jürgen mm -hmm. Ritzi. And like those points matter to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. A real quick story about Rudnauer. FCI championship in uh, whatever year it was, 03, 04. Okay, me and T were on the team during my Shepherd Dogs. After Saturday, me and T are first and second. T's first, 196. I'm second, 99, 95. We are the kings. We go to the banquet. We're walking around. Everybody's like, man, these American dudes are going to win this shit. They're they doing it. It ain't going to be close, okay? Next day, we got to do protection. And me and T both know Rudenauer's out there. <laughs> and me and T look at each other and go, yeah, let's just see what happens tomorrow. I got 90. T got 82. But anyway, that's okay. And then Peter Jacobs' dog ran all over the stadium. He got 96. But that's okay because he's German. But that's right. Okay. That's okay. Anyway, but I'll tell you another good story about Rudenauer. It's long for Rudenauer's story. Rudenauer's wife, uh, uh, Erica, who just passed away, beautiful woman, beautiful, lovely woman, uh, had a dog named Ali who won the Bundesliga. About two or three weeks before the Bundesliga, they trained with Helmut Koning. Okay, I was there, and Ali would come in and punch in the blind and punch in the blind and punch in the blind. Helmut looks at me, gives me the sleeve, gives me the stick. Ollie comes around the blind. I put the stick on that motherfucker's head, not just once, not just twice. I backed his ass out of that blind. Rudenauer almost comes out of his shoes at me, okay? So a little bit of cussing, a little bit of screaming, a little bit of Rudenauer grabbing my shirt, okay? So, okay, fine. Three weeks later, or two weeks later, Ollie wins the Bundesliga, 97 in protection. Mm -hmm. Those days I did I get a telegram from Rudenauer. Dean, thank you very much for cleaning up our dog in the blind. That was a good. That was a good. Yeah, sometimes a it's a it's a hard calls to make, and and you know the thing about Rudnow really, what modern people need to understand is that Rudnow was one of the keys to clean up our dog sport. In the early '90s, the points were ridiculous. They're giving the points away. It was stupid. It was stupid, okay? It was really bad, and everybody knew this. There were so many, and everything, not just in protection and everything. And Rudenauer was Rudenauer, Ritzy, and he got Pierre, got some international guys behind him and said, no, we're going to judge this shit right. And then believe me, from what they did, their evaluations, because people judged, they breed to what you have to win yeah. with. That I'm telling you, that's why... We have what we have now. No, no, for sure. That, that, that's this type of judging raises the criteria yes, for, exactly. for us it's, it's, to do exactly. better. 
Exactly, and that's why I talk about the judging and the dumbbells, you know, right. to make people better. It's easy. In the old days to teach fronts, we put the prong collar on the dog, and we jam him into our stomach and give him a piece of food. Then the dog would learn real quick, if I ran to your stomach, that's a safe place, okay? But that was, he's not to touch you. You got to be a better dog trainer than that, okay? Got to be a better, a better way, a more, let's even say this word, a more humane way to do it. Right. With the dog. Okay. And again, you know, so. It is amazing to me that whomever, I don't, I don't know, maybe you know how the whole Schutzhund points came about, but the old points were very, yeah, very, right. very good, you know, because we all recognize already way before everything that the dumbbell the retrieve is such a complex exercise and that's why it has so many points. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. old the old style long attack where you go run away and come back. The attack out of the blind. Like there was there were some really like like good tests for for training and also mm -hmm. the ability of the genetic predisposition of dogs. Like this is, and I don't know how Schutzhund came about appreciating yeah. those moments. Right. right. You know, again, um, I love history, okay, and culture. And it's amazing to me about how this developed out of that German culture, you know, really amazing. Um, uh, the discipline of the sport, you know, uh, when you read the beginning books about uh, this was not a sport uh, for your poor person okay mm. you couldn't afford to feed your dog much less your family okay this was a sport more for well-to-do people let's not talk about police work that's it was just a sport okay um, um, I always say this okay if it wasn't for Hitler we'd all been Germans okay the Germans really their culture um, it really has a root of really good discipline, a really good step-by-step uh, -step shit, you know, structure. This is this, this is this, and then you do this. You can't do this unless you do this. Uh, if, uh, it, 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 it amazes you when you go to Germany how clean it is, you know what I'm saying? Those type of things, you know. Um, uh, and, and again, how this – and when you read um, – if you read some train there's a very interesting video and you still can find it it's like from 36 37 at the german shepherd seeger show in germany the police come out and they're doing obedience at the same time protection is going on and this like amazed everybody you know and it it just shows you that maybe there's not really that much new under sun but again and it's also Back to you about the points. To me, I can really see how those points can illustrate different aspects of the dog's temperament. You understand? Right. Okay. Right. You know, um, uh, the, 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 the healing and the field exercise, what I mean by field, sit down and stand in motion. Those show the ability, the trainability, the eagerness of the dog wanting to work. Okay, it shows his reflexes, his natural reflexes. Okay, this is why you have to be. This is what I like so much is find those judge understand that extreme healing with the nose in the air underneath your armpit. That can also be a press drive state. In other words, that was made with severe electric collar. You understand, and that dog is too stressed in that position. It's very difficult. To describe to describe it here, it's easier to be seen. There was a particular dog at the qualifier, and this was to me was one of the high points of the judge of that judge day's judging is him making that example of this dog. Everybody thought it was so impressive. No, 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 no. He was pressed into that state yeah. through the e-collar. Through the e-collar. Okay. There was no no, but I forgot what we were talking. I'm sorry. What were we, no, oh, no, about the, no. It's it's very and then again the dumbbells. Sure, the dog has natural retrieving instinct. Okay, but again that also shows the dog's ability to be molded. All of our sport, every all of our sport, we have instincts 
that we mold into disciplined behaviors. And we must have dogs that have that kind of training level to be able to be molded and trained. You just want some mad fucking beast. What is he going to do for you? Nothing. Okay. On the other hand, you don't want a wimp who can't take the stress of training. Right. You know, they can't. They can't take the structure. A lot of dogs. Uh, it's a lot easier for let them have a little bit crooked fronts. Let them bump you. Let them be a little bit sloppy. You make them tight. Oh Lord, I don't want to be tight. I can't be tight. I can't concentrate like that. That makes my that stresses me to have that level of concentration. You know? Yeah, so, there is that thing about the sport that I really like. It's also recognizing your ability, recognizing who is your dog. Mm -hmm. And knowing, like knowing very well the points, so you can play that chess game. Yes, yes. I you know? know? Yes. And, you know, people have to understand, nobody ever gets 300 points in this sport. Nobody ever does. And that's cool, okay? So when you have, you know, your dog's limits and, you know, you've attained that, hey, you know, like back in the day when I went to the Nationals, I didn't ever, I didn't want to, I wanted to make a V. That's what I wanted, was a V overall, you know? But I would always figure, I mean, come on, Dean, you're going to make V in the track. You, My point was always obedience. That's where was my weak place. That's where I had to keep up, okay? But I knew my dog's limits, you know? I didn't live in a fantasy world about what my, my last, uh, my last really good dog, my Doberman Keeper, I knew what he was, you know. I mean, he was a, uh, he was. It was like cheating. It was like a golden retriever, you know what I'm saying? And but I knew his limits. I knew he in in protection. Okay, that dog never made V in protection. Never. I showed him ten times, ten different fields, ten different helpers, ten different judges. He always made over ninety. Okay, he didn't have that innate fighting drive kind of shit that a Doberman needs to have, okay? And so consequently, I got out of him what I think, I attained what I think was probably the highest level I could yep. with him there, okay? And so that was, you know, to me, to me, believe me, dogs is about my success and what I think I I don't need no judge to tell me what I'm doing. Those days are gone, okay? I know what I did. It feels good, okay? You say I am a good, did a good job, that feels good. But I know what I did, okay? And I'm competing against what I think I can attain with my dog. Really, that's the deal. That's, that's so, the well deal. Said. Mm -hmm. so well it's, said. So well said. You know, you're not... I mean, sure, back in the day when I was young, I used to love to beat the Germans, and especially I had a hard-on about those guys from that other place in America. I just used to love to snoop. That's another day, another story. But, <laughs> no, but uh, no, no, it's about your, you know, that's what's so great about your dog, too. You're such a team, you know, it's, it's, anyway, go ahead. No, it's really like a, it's, it's kind of like a fighter, like a boxer or whatever, you know, like you, you don't want to push him to a break point. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a huge problem always with training. <laughs> This is okay, like yes. probably the number one okay. problem for everybody that wants to accomplish very high goals. I'll tell you a story. Oh. When, we, when we tied at the Nationals and you beat me because you had higher protection, okay? The day before in training, we go out to train, okay? And my Rex, he was kind of crazy, kind of crazy. And I didn't really trust him all this much, okay? So he went and punched in the blind. T's doing the helper work. T goes, Dean, come in again. I'm going to club him. I go, I don't know, T. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know the grip. I don't know, T. I don't know. I, I don't know you should do this. He goes, dude, I'm, we need to club him. <laughs> you know, T is. That's hard. So T does what I say. He don't club him. Comes in the blind and Nationals punches the helper and you win. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, but, but again, you, th I said that because about limits and stuff, you know, and um, uh, it, one of my weak points, believe me, all my friends will tell me this, that sometimes Dean is uh, too soft on the dogs is maybe a word or, or maybe doesn't trust them maybe as much as he should is maybe another word. Okay. Because that's well, one the thing truth. about you over the years, man, you, you you appreciate the dog you have at the moment. Like you love doing the things you love with the dog with the moment and you know who that dog is. So you're very careful about not 
breaking that dog. Yeah, yeah. You know, they don't shit cold. They don't shit cold, you know. And, and truly, especially our quality animals, they are trying the best they can. Yeah. They're trying the best they can, okay? And it's just our inability to communicate to them what we want them to do, all right? Uh, um, you know, especially in our German Shepherd dogs, that's the breed I know a little bit about. The other breeds, I've just trained them. I can talk minutely about them. But most of our good German Shepherds are medium to medium high dogs, okay, that through Good obedience, where the dog trusts you. Of course, the dog has natural instincts, good athletic. You have a good helper who can take that, like you discussed, that boundary farther and farther and farther. Consequently, you have a biddable dog, a dog who's fun and easy to train, okay? Uh, when And everybody, I'm going to say one thing to you young people, don't be so locked and my dog is so tough and my dog is this and my dog is that. Okay, my last competition dog, Ivan remembers this dog, my Verde. You couldn't beat him in the track in obedience. He'll stomp your ass. I couldn't control that motherfucker in protection, okay? Yeah. And I got sick of it. Last time I showed that dog in the regionals in California, I got 99, 96, 81. And that 81 was a gift. And I just got tired of And Fritz Beeler told me when I bought him, his mother was Rex's, mother, was Rex's sister. Fritz told me, Dean, this dog is too crazy. You don't want him. He's got a screw loose. And, and, and I mean, I just, it was just a fight all the time in protection. The other two phases, I could do it naked, but no, and that's, yeah. you don't want dogs like that. Right away, if you test a dog and it's got a shitty grip, don't take it. Don't take it. Verity was like that. Mark, if he was right now, he'd be, he'd be laughing and punching me. Just the other day when Mark <laughs> worked my Doberman for the first time, you know, he gives it a grip and he goes, well, damn, I wish Dober, I wish Verde grip like that. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I want to give your message to the young trainers. Because, you know, like guys, like like today, they start to, they they get, I, I, I feel like there is so many young people that are going in and they want to do their best, but they're getting lost of trying to, who do I learn from? What can I, how much I can push my dog? You know, like mm -hmm. all these things that are so important. Right, right. You know, uh, first of all, you know, young person, um, it's, it's, it's a tough game, okay? Because first of all, you have to have an element of trust for people at the club. Before you go to a club, I would go to different clubs and just look and just watch. Also, too, um, one thing about me in my life, I've never, I'm have never i blunt, and I will come right to your face and tell you what I think. Ask him this question. If I train with you, can I go train with somebody else? Mm. And if they say no, I'd leave. I'd leave. Nobody, sh you know, there's more than one good brain surgeon in this world. And there's more than one good trainer, okay? Go to seminars. Don't always volunteer your dog, but watch. If you learn something you don't like, Hey, you learn something. But if you don't go, you ain't going to learn. With that being said, though, you have to have a path. You have to have a path that you try to stay on. You just can't go to a seminar and say, oh, I'm going to, just going to do this new thing I learned. Yeah, Again, because there, there is the, the seminar hopping type of right. person, right? You got, you, got to have to, you got to have some faith in your training director, his path, okay? Um, I think a lot of clubs could do a much better job in structure as far as training is concerned. I go some places, I don't, rarely do seminars anymore, but I go some places and I see what happens and I just, man, what, what, what are you doing? Why, what? There's no structure here. People, are, the only way you get a title is, it's like when I was young, the only way I got a title because I was crazy. Like, I'm going to do this shit. There was nobody to teach me, you understand? I just got a book and started yanking. And, and, and there needs to be better structure at the clubs for that. There needs to be more regional training seminars to try to get people out of those Jim Jones situations. You know, Jim Jones, the guy, drink my Kool-Aid, don't mm. go anywhere else. To break that mold, also to teach people, I'm, I'm the last one to say this, because I'm not good to play with others, but to teach a community spirit 
on the local level first starts on the local level you understand within our region okay the, that we have this cum there needs to be more regional work days one thing we used to have in california we would have something called the shuts in one championship okay I and know. like one dog would do tracking one dog would do obedience one dog would do protection should we have and that way like your old dog could track or maybe you just want to do obedience with your dog, but you get people out there having fun, okay? We used to have protection tournaments in California to raise money for the team. At nighttime, we'd have 50 dogs out there, you know? And 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 a, a leadership is taught from the top. Example is taught from the top. You just don't sit there and go, ooh, ooh, ooh. you preach, you say. I don't understand why USA has no mission statement when you open up the magazine. I've been saying this for 30 fucking years. What is our mission statement with these dogs in America? What is our purpose being here? Finally, USA is biting the bullet a little bit about some things, like registering and these things. But let me get back to your stuff. Go to seminars, okay? Don't have a closed mind, okay? Um, uh, don't be... There's. This is one of the first things that Renhardt Lintner ever said to me, there's no dumb questions, there's only dumb answers. So don't be afraid to answer no questions. There's only dumb, and if somebody insults you because you answer a question, he's an asshole, you understand? There's another saying in Germany, he's a dog guy, you help him. What does that mean? You share all the information you have. Listen, this is the only thing I know to do. So sometimes you got to pay me money for me to open my mouth, but I'll, I'll run my mouth for free all the time. Okay. And if he's a dog guy, you help him. Okay. You help him. All right. Yeah. Um, every guy, every, every person in the sport, go to the fucking gym and stop being so fat. Jesus Christ. Get your, this is a sport. This is a sport. Try to lose some weight. Okay. Don't talk to me about your thyroid. Christ Almighty, and you helpers who are tired after two dogs. Come on, Ivan, you saw me when I was young. I could work 50 dogs every day, okay? Good, come you work way more than 50 you know, dogs. You know, come on, don't tell me you're <laughs> tired. Don't tell me that, you know? But, but again, um, go to seminars. There's, you know, this is this It is, is very difficult today, though, you know, like with social media and you watch this little clips yes. from yes. Yes. some yes. super work and it, it, it can get confusing yes you know it, it's it's you know again i don't watch videos and I, i've never you know i don't do that stuff you know i just live this quiet life on my farm but uh it's if you could you know uh, somebody you find a training program you like that training program online. You see other students who've taken that training program. Who have, there's proof is in front of your eyeballs. That's a good place for you. Okay, so there's because there's continuity there. Okay, but also too because it's competitive, go to seminar. See, there's something to learn. One thing in the beginning about the protection phase, I want only one helper to develop my dog. The helper trains my dog in the beginning, okay? He reads the dog. I have one helper work my dog. Once my dog shows such consistent level of what I want with that helper, then I might interject another helper. Not to mention when I have a super dog, there's something called safety. Not any Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to have, is going to be catching my dog on that long one, okay? Um, another thing, people, you want, you want to, I'll be very conceited. I've won tracking three times at the world. I don't know how many times the nationals I've won tracking. Because when I, I won't tonight, but tomorrow I'm going to track my dog three times. Okay? You got to work. You got to work. Anything that in life is great is hard work. If it's not hard work, it's not great. It's not great. It's not great. Only through hard work is there greatness. And, 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 you know, guys, uh, one quick thought. The success is not you. The success is that dog, the trust he has in you, okay? The relationship you have, the faith. You know, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a parent. I don't have a kid, you know? But it must be an amazing feeling when that child looks at you and trusts you and, and has faith in you and knows that 
their parents could never do no harm and their parents are always going to trust them and it must be even on a bigger level with a dog even a bigger level so you know you think about that too okay and also too don't be afraid to question the judge if he won't answer you don't there's no dumb questions there's only dumb answers good ones very good ones okay because when we i mean when we go training and we do all that stuff at the end of the day you go back home and there is your dog hanging out with you yeah and that's yeah. what's about you know also your young people don't be collecting dogs don't have a bunch of dogs man don't do that i know it's don't puppies are cute don't do that okay don't get trapped caught in that trap also in three years now we got five dogs no 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 also too once a dog is about three or four thing about getting a new one because he could break real quick so that happens too something with the seminars i i just thought mm -hmm. of it you know like like you have to stick through the whole seminar don't yeah. make judgment what happens in the first day pay attention you know, and see what happens at yes. the end yes you know ivan you make a really good point there and again, the seminar that I just went to, I'm, I, sh I should have stuck around. I left after the first day because it was just kind of dull to me, okay? And that was wrong because at that point, I had to realize who I was in this world and I was showing a little bit of disrespect, you understand? Okay, and what you said is vital because again, it, if you learn one thing and that one thing might come in the last five minutes, but also too, if you start to, then you'll start to hopefully see some continuity in the presentation. Okay, that it does make sense that these things, you know, you know uh, what did Godfrey Dilda used to say something? He was really cute. He goes, what did he say? You do that enough, you'll eventually do it. But it's kind of like that, you know, it's just, but again, by uh, go, have an open mind, stay for the whole thing. Like Ivan said, ask questions. Okay. Uh, and. And, and also, too, there can't be 10 hours of chalkboard. <laughs> right. You got to get out. You got to get out there and, and do something. Okay. It's it's a like any other sport. It, it's a monkey see, monkey do. You know, we mentioned Roger Scholhorst. I pronounced his name really wrong from Belgium. Great dog trainer. I mean, one of the greatest in the world. But he don't talk so much about dog training. But you watch him train his dog. Holy Toledo, you know, or watch him do helper work when he was a young man. Wow. He can't talk so much about it, okay? That's where someone like Riser, he'll wear you out. But that's his business, you know? But uh, you got to see it. You got to yes. see it. Man, what a conversation. I've been you know, looking I've, forward to this for so long. You know, Ivan, we've, we've really never sat and talked like this for a great length of time, you know? I just want to tell you, Ivan, I'm, you, you provide such a good example for people in this world, okay, about what our dog sport can be, how enjoyable it can be, okay. Also, too, um, it's it's just it's just and 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 you. This is my impression that you try to present people with programs that's within their capabilities, okay. For instance, I talk about my new obedience trainer an older person who wasn't very physical couldn't do it somebody who was like in a wheelchair maybe they couldn't do a lot of that shit okay um, but again there has to be a program that's broad that a lot of people can do not just a, you know right. you know and, and that's a good and then once you have that broad base then you can venture out into you know you understand and get a little bit more here a little bit more there a little bit more here you know it's like when people come people come to me dean i want to make the world championship well, let's try for a B. Let's do a right. B first, you know, right. and then we can talk about something else. That's a whole other conversation, as you keep saying, like like winning a championship and winning two or winning mm -hmm. four. Man, no, it's, I mean, it's a this. whole level of insanity what you know it this, takes. I mean, you get on top of that podium and you see shit you've never seen before. Right. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, it's it's... It's easy for us to talk like we're something, but I mean, it's back in the day, okay, it spooked to me. It spooked to me so bad. I didn't trust nobody, especially women, you know, a bunch of fucking groupies, you know. Right. I didn't trust nobody. 
everybody wanted to, be, they don't want to be my friend because of Dean Calderon. That was the hard Cal- part for me too. You know, like I thought I'm surrounded by friends all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you always get people say, yeah, I trained with Dean. I don't even know your name, man. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that it really, and then you get, you get, you know, you get, you probably happened in your life where you get people a little bit off centered about this shit, you know, and start, I mean, I was punched out at the world championship. If you remember that story, I was walking in Boston, some fool comes and knocks my lights out. Because th- his wife, he thinks I wanted to know. Not my, you know, his wife was whatever. That's her business, not mine. But this, and this is just one of many things that's happened to me. You know, I mean, it really, uh, back in the day, I mean, I can remember, especially T and I, I mean, I can remember leaving and saying, we're going to train. All of a sudden, there's this caravan of cars following us. I can remember coming out of my hotel room, and there's six or seven strangers, strangers that I don't know. And, 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 and oh no, no, you know, again, about ruining championships, okay? Uh, you get a really, it's good to win one, but the real proof is when you win multi with different dogs. That's really the proof. Right. Okay? Really, 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 really. You, things start to happen, and, and it's and probably in any endeavor in life when you're a winner, but uh, it's very important to never remember, uh, always remember your shit stinks, and the next shit, I won the Nationals with panther and flunk protection of the world okay so you know but again you That's get right. up there and things happen and you start to see things people start to treat you ways that are just you know i i really feel sorry for some famous people i've read interviews with so many of them and they just they get to the place where they can't trust anybody they just can't because they don't know anybody who really likes them it becomes you know, it becomes confusing at the top yes. for sure. You know, back for back sure. in the old days when I was a young man, and, and I don't care because I didn't trust women because I mean they only they were just liked me because I was Dean the dog trainer. Do you really know who Dean is? Right. You know, it's okay for sex and everything. You're a guy, great, super. You know, that's easy. You know, there's dog groupies, but man, for your emotions, you know, for what really ticks inside your heart, you know, the only reason you like me is because that what you see out there. Yeah. Uh, and 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 imagine if something happens to you and you cannot do more help or oh, work. Yes. Oh, tell me about it. Who is yes. this guy? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, personal story. Just like okay. that. Papam. My ex-wife, she married me because she was a groupie. But once she found out that this shit doesn't really mean that much to me, and then once we got to Ohio, I'm like, Carla. I think I just want to sit here in this house and just fuck off. All of a sudden, there was no more pizzazz, no yeah. more glory, no more this, no more that. Oh, okay. You know, oh, okay. The, the human okay. nature just comes up immediately. Yeah. You know, which is up. And maybe we we can end it here because we can talk forever. I can talk yeah, to you. I can I talk know. to you fucking forever. It's like seven o'clock. Anyway, go ahead, Alvin. The one... Like we were at the podium mm-hmm. when I when I won with the Malinois the German Shepherd right. Championship, and I remember it, and I tell this to to anybody. I was at the podium. I was standing on the top, and you look at me and you're like, "You stay here. Don't walk out. Just." Stay here. It's your time. <laughs> you don't remember this, but that meant so much. Because yeah, yeah. it really did, man. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, Ivan, uh, I don't remember the moment, but, uh, you know, you were the winner. You stay there. Yes. It's your place. Yes. It's your, it's your time. You're the winner. Yes, it's your time. It's your winner. You soak the shit up. Yes, I think you don't feel shy. You don't feel we, anything. It, it's your time. Yes, I think this when we die. Okay, I think if you die and you're a good person, you're just going to relive all the good moments and all the people you love and all your experiences will be there again and again and again for eternity. If you're a dickhead, though. <laughs> but I really, I hope, you know, uh, death is another issue. But I hope this is what's the end for us, you know, that we do just relive our beautiful experiences. And, you know, Ivan, uh, I think uh, for myself and uh, 
you know, one of the greatest rewards that I have from dog sport is I've maybe caused a, you know some other people to be happy too, you know, some other people to have. I mean, my God, you know, like the feeling you described, I've had those feelings too, you know. Um, um, I've had feelings in training that have equaled to the accomplishment feelings that I've had in this trials, you know what I'm saying? Sure, exactly. Just just breakthroughs in training, you know what I'm saying? I I mean, it's, it's, it's... Actually, those are even more special moments, but those are more intimate kind of moments. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I I know, I know, I know. Again, Ivan, let's, let's, let's get going. You know, again, I'm I'm telling you, uh, I can't wait to see you interview T. T is just... I can't tell you enough. This guy is, is special beyond belief. He is just you. And you talk about proof in the points, okay? Yes. Talk about yes. proof in the points, okay? <laughs> now, I can tell you, who's the only guy to breed his own dog and win the Nationals? T. Flo. I mean, you want to talk about other shit? You know, the guy is unique, as unique. Look what he did with his children. Look what, I mean, yes. come on. Yes, and, and from the And from where everything was going and... and how everybody was looking down on him. It, 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 it's a you know, you know, a Ivan. fuck. Ivan, you know, good for you, dude. Fuck. You know, T, T, um, T's a strong man. Okay, T's a strong man. Look what he did. His wife is amazing. Fuck, Joy. Look at those children and how yeah. they turned out. And and I mean the 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 stuff that T had to go through in dog sport. Exactly. Nobody even has an idea I mean, what's up, what's that mean. Work, I'm not going to, one last thing. T and I once were selected. T was going to do the front half, and I was going to do the back half at the Nationals. We beat out all the FL tryouts. We beat out the local favorites, okay? The shit that went on after that, the fucking shit that went on after that, and I'm telling you, it wasn't because it was Dean Calderon and T. Floyd human beings. Right. It had to do with the color of our yes. skin. Yes. And, and, and if Peter Jacob was here, he could tell you some of the shit. He's too old now, but he could tell you some of the shit that went on. And T. could tell you the same. Okay. Uh, all I got is that's not relevant. What's relevant is T.'s absolute character, his proof in the points, his radiance, is his his wanting to help and i think your idea me t and you oh you guys are super special to me would be awesome oh this is happening this is absolutely happening and we're doing it not like this we're doing it in person yeah it would be awesome be awesome okay ivan well listen thank you so much sir I want to say again, you are such an ambassador for our sport i mean bless you and, and bless all that you do for us thank you my friend Okay. I hope I hope everybody <clears throat> is got a little excited about training dogs and what it is about because of that conversation. Thank you, my friend. Yeah.